The Iron Rappaport app is available for free download on all Apple and Android platforms. Once the app is downloaded, go to IamRappaport.com and click the Get It Now tab to sign up for premium access. Listen to me. Tuesday and Friday episodes are free on the app. Premium access gets you all the primetime Wednesday emergency and archive episodes plus exclusive videos and bonus content. What, you don't have premium access? Here is what you missed. Here I am alone in the gloom tomb. Game 7. This is why podcast. Hi, I have Metal World Peace on the line. Five minutes, right? Five minutes. Two questions for the great Brian Scalabrini. Today, we're going deep to celebrate the great James Brown. Steven Jackson, how you feeling, my man? LeBron, he was a rookie. He came and tried to dunk on me, and I have footage of it. I grabbed him and slammed him to the ground, and this wasn't even a playoff. There's only room for four people on the banana boat. Download the I Am Rappaport app today. What's up? This is Michael Rapport. Brand new Memorial Day. I am Rapport Stereo Podcast is coming up next. Me and G Moody are discussing the possibility of LeBron James' reign coming to an end. Tommy Loren got splashed with water and so much more. Plus, the young shooter, Judge Dean Collins, is back for another award winning segment of Sick Fuck of the Week or Beyond. And from the Oakland Raiders, this is fantastic. From the Oakland Raiders, Pro bowl offensive lineman Donald Penn is rocking with us discussing what it's like to block and protect Derek Carr the hundred million dollar man what it's like to play alongside beast mode Marshawn Lynch the real John Gruden is back in Oakland and so much more from Donald Penn he is a shit talker he is an NFL vet and an OG and a pro bowler special guest from the Oakland Raiders. This is fantastic NFL shit talking talk with Donald Penn. It's a jam packed, supersized I Am Rappaport stereo podcast getting you ready for Memorial Day weekend. Miles Jordan, let me get something funky. All right. G. Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Michael Rappaport, we are the Disco 2. This is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, getting you ready for what hopes to be a relaxing, fantastic, and very safe Memorial Day weekend. You are now rocking with the best. It is the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. G. Moody, last name rhymes with duty. Michael Rappaport, a.k.a. the Gringo Mandingo. A.K.A. the Jeff Rulin of podcasting. A.K.A. the Jake LaMotta of podcasting. Mr. Moody, how you feeling? I'm cooling out. Everything is good. Great weather. Really taking it in. A good breeze. No humidity. Brilliant sunshine. It can't be any better. All right, good. It can't be any better. Just like the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast can't be any better. And listen, I want I want people to go out there. Okay, it's like IMDb for movies. You know, they they they're breaking down uh, reviews uh, of of podcasts. It's this website called Podchaser.com. Podchaser.com. Go to Podchaser.com. Leave a rating and a review of the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, and tell us. What butter soft t-shirt you would like within your review. We will be picking winners at random every day for the next week. If we pick you and your rating and your review is fantastic, we may send you a free butter soft I am Rappaport Stereo podcast t-shirt. Go to podchaser.com. That is podchaser.com. Give us a rating. Give us a review. A you fuck you. (laughs) Um, All right, so let's just jump into it. The king is down. The rain is almost over, you fuck you. As of the recording of this I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast, and things change quickly in the NBA as we know, LeBron James and his Cleveland Cavaliers are down 3-2 to 
against the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference NBA Championship. If they lose one more game, now I, I, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, Moody. Yeah. Cor- correct me if I'm wrong. If they lose one more game, w- what happens? I'm just asking a question. Don't want to get you get you all riled up, but just if they do lose one more game, what happens? Elimination. Okay. Uh, he looked very tired. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you be? I'd be exhausted. But listen. These are his guys. That's his coach. It's his offensive system. Everything runs through LeBron James. He's got Ty Lue there. We don't know if this guy can coach or not. LeBron James is a superior basketball mind. He's a superior player. But listen, everybody has their flaws. Maybe his flaw is who he picks to be teammates. Maybe maybe he shouldn't be coached by a guy who he's that close with, Mr. Ty Lue. Maybe, maybe that's not the way things should be. Maybe there should be a a separation between church and state, just like there's a separation between player and coach. What do I know? I know this. I will say this. That guy after the game, game uh, uh, five, Miles, play the clip. I know you have a way that you measure turnovers if they're aggressive or bad turnovers. Seven the other night and six tonight. Where are you with with, that's an unusual high number for you? How many of them are unforced and how many of them can you live with? Um, I had two turnovers where I felt like they were just um, really bad. My first turnover, I tried to, I saw something happening and uh, Marcus did a good job. Marcus Morris did a great job of reading it, threw it up ahead to Kev. He picked it off. Um, my second turnover, I went baseline, lost lost my foot on Marcus Morris, another turnover. Um, a couple of them, one in transition to Jeff Green, I thought I, you know, put it on his hands and he kind of fumbled it. Um, wish I could have that one back. I maybe bounced past that one. Um, had a back door one to, to swish. Uh, it hit his hands. I maybe should have not thrown that one. It was a little bit in traffic. Al Horford was right there, but it hit swish hands. But maybe should have took that one back. Um, I had a post up on Terry Rozier. They came in Peyton uh, from the bottom side, and that means Peyton means they double from the baseline. Sorry, guys. Um, and Jason Tatum got his hands on him. I had a guy wide open. I should have faked high and threw a low. And my last turnover was just very, very careless on Terry Rozier. We had a pick and roll. I got the switch, and I just lost it out of bounds on the other side of there, um, away from their um, basket. So that's my six turnovers. I think out of those six, maybe three of them was just careless. I think the other three were attack turnovers, and I'm okay with that. He was asked after the game, about his turnovers. And w- without checking any paper, without looking down, without batting an eye, without preparing for a test, this fucking beast, this robot, LeBron James, was able to recite in detail every single one of his turnovers. Like, this guy's mind is on some other shit. And some people are like, they, p- people get confused when I compliment him, gee. They get confused. Well, I thought you yeah. hate him. I go, don't, don't hate him. You've they, calm down. I don't hate him. I want them to fucking lose. I want him yeah. to lose. People think it's a like a it's a personal thing. They don't want to hear that from you. Uh, you 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 dissing him one time. I confuse him. This. Nobody want to hear that from you. Huh? For, for, like nobody want to hear you huh? praising LeBron after you after you dragged him down. So, of course, they're going to come at you like that. I'll like, retract it, it. It's not genuine. I'll, it's retra- not genuine. I'll retract it. But but I said what I said, but I'll retract it. Keep it on record. Keep it in the podcast. You heard the clip. The guy's a fucking robot. He's on some uh, Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman, Tom Cruise shit. Uh, nobody yeah. wants to hear it. I'll keep my, I'll keep my compliments to myself. Uh, yeah, yeah. You throwing dirt on the grave, but you don't know what the outcome of the next game is going to hey, be. Uh, and, and considering the caliber of player we're talking about, I think you should shut the fuck up with this guy, man. Okay, okay. Uh, no problem. No problem. Um, Until as it's over. Re- <laughs> Excuse me? Until the, uh, the bell sounds and maybe he's lost. Then you could say shit, but don't count this dude out. You did that before and they won the championship okay. on that. Okay, I just was, guy, listen, I- I'm here to present the news. Okay, I don't mean to get you all riled up. I could tell you're a little nervous. It's okay. It's okay. I I, can't, I tried to compliment the guy, and then, and then you jumped down my throat. Yeah, yeah. Nobody want to hear that from you. Uh, Western Conference Finals, we have a series. Houston is now up three games to two. It's very interesting. It's very competitive. I thought it was going to be easier for the Warriors. 
It hasn't been. We're going to see how that plays itself out. Um, and I, I, I don't know. We have a jam-packed I Am Rappaport Memorial Day episode. Uh, as I told you, uh, offensive lineman. This guy talks shit. This guy's got stories. He's a pro bowler. He plays for the Oakland Raiders. Played for John Gruden in Tampa Bay. Is now playing for John Gruden in Oakland. Offensive lineman. He protects the blind side of a hundred million dollar man, the quarterback, Derek Carr. He blocks mm. for Marshawn Lynch. He's a good dude, a thoughtful dude, and he loves to talk shit. All kinds of stories about playing football. It just is just a great interview with D. Donald Penn coming up later in the episode. Um recurring recurring theme of the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, Chicken Head Tommy Loren. Oh, what happened now? Chickenhead Tommy Loren uh, was at a restaurant in, I believe, Minnesota. If you've never listened to the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, you know that we do not fact check. But I believe she was in Minnesota. Um, uh-huh. and, and while she was in a restaurant, a woman started verbally abusing her. You have to use that word. It's not just calling her a piece of shit. You have to say verbal abuse. And then she splashed her with some water. You see, that's dumb shit. Yeah, I, I, as much as I don't support that. Because, you know, that could turn into a whole thing. Yeah. Like, you you know, you that... never know how she's going to react, how somebody else is going to react, how another per- that That's not okay. As much as uh, I don't like her, and I think she's just a like just an upgraded cheerleader, and, and she's not a critical thinker, and, and she, she doesn't even give a critical thoughts to the president, who we all know is flawed. She doesn't give any sort of biasness. It's just, I want to suck him off. I want to suck him off. I want to suck him off. She's not saying that, but that's basically uh, the, the way she talks. Like, he yeah. could do no wrong. Even his wife isn't as unbiased as she is. <sighs> yeah. But I don't support I, I think- walking up on people, throwing water on people uh, that you don't know and, and, why, and, and doing all that. Why are they doing that? that? Why, why, why are they doing that? If these are the people that are about tolerance and... And diversity. Why are you attacking her just for her words? She's out. You throwing water on her, and and for what? For what? But you, but you, the motherfucker with the tolerance, and oh, we're compassion. But it's the opposite mm. because there's no need to do that. Yeah, she I, I, has her opinion, and you have yours. So why you gotta assault the person? You see what I'm saying? Fuck, uh, that's that's bullshit. I, I agree. I agree. Um. This prompted the president of the United States, the president of the United States, after this happened, he came out and defended Tommy Loren. She, she's great. We love her. We appreciate her. We respect her. And, and, and this is why Donald Trump, Dick Stain Donald Trump, uh, as he, he better known as Dick Stain Donald Trump, uh, why I think you're a fucking joke. Uh, wh- why are you talking about some lackluster, unskilled uh, uh, chicken head? Like, well, why is this even? In- why do you even know about her? But this is the- this is this is what he does. He he tweeted his support for Tommy Lorraine after she got splashed with a little bit of water. Um, <laughs> a little bit. It, it wasn't Speaks- like somebody did like an ice bucket challenge. They hit it with a little little dousing. Yo, yo, you you walk in a restaurant and you walk somewhere. And, and you got your views, and motherfuckers attack you. If she, if she was really from the street, if it was some street shit, that woman would have got her ass kicked for that. But you can't do that to people because you disagree with her or whatever. You'll get your ass kicked for that because why are you doing that? I why? agree. But, but, but uh, uh, I don't know why uh, Donald Trump is such a big fan that he had to send out a tweet about Those her. Those his uh, supporters. T- t- uh, he, she needed the support. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask you and, and ask a question to the fans. Do you think that Tommy Loren and former ESPN broadcaster, they're like the same person. They have unwavering, uh, a relentless uh, support of all things Donald Trump. Britt mm-hmm. McHenry, remember her? She got fired yes. from uh, from uh, ESPN. I call her Chickenhead Britt. She has the same colored teeth and the same... Bleach blonde hair is Tommy Loren. Do you think that they are related? And and do you think that the color of their teeth should be called hooded white or alt-right 
white. I wanted to pose uh, that to you. Uh, nah, they not re- they not related. And uh, I would I would go for hooded white. I like that. That's kind of clever. Hooded white. <laughs> hooded white. Okay. Uh, the the NFL news is 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 you know, know. with the, with the protests and the fines. Uh, the Jets owner and the San Francisco owner um, basically are not in support of what the NFL did. They have come out and said they will pay all fines for their players uh, that are divvied out for these uh, penalties. If you peacefully protest the flag, uh, this conversation is going to – this is going to be the main conversation until the playoffs <laughs> during the yeah. NFL season. Yeah, who's in the locker room? Who didn't – who stayed? Who's, who's anti this? It's going to be it's going to be terrible, but the owners uh, drew a line in the sand without the uh, consultation of the players. That lets you know that they're saying, we don't give a fuck. This is our league, and this is what it's going to be. So they set the policy, and that's what it is now. Uh, so I, I, take, I say take the, the grievance to where, like I said the last podcast, take the grievance. If the issue is police, let's go to the Justice Department. Let's go to the local precincts. Let's do whatever. But you're not going to do that in a, in a workplace, in a stadium. They're not going to allow you to do that. Well, Dick Stain, Donald Trump, said uh, that maybe these players shouldn't be allowed to play. Maybe they shouldn't be employed. Maybe they shouldn't live in this country. This is, again, Dick Stain, Donald Trump, the draft dodger. Uh, and, yeah. and now he's Mr. American. He, yeah. he got drafted... And he avoided the draft at all costs. Now he's Mr. American. Right, right. That, that, is, that is true. Um, yeah. He, he's saying these people shouldn't live in, live in the United States. Uh, uh, maybe, they should, maybe they shouldn't leave. He suggested they shouldn't live, live here. This is, why, yeah. uh, this is why I can't fuck with him. Uh, uh, because but you know, you know what he's saying. He, he's saying, oh, if you don't like the flag, you don't, want, you don't like the country, maybe you shouldn't be here. Well, this, that, he, maybe he, that's what he's I saying. don't think he likes the flag, and I don't think he likes the country because when he got drafted, he didn't go. Right. Pose it back to him. That's what somebody should do. Pose it back. That's real journalism. Maybe you oh, don't you, like the flag, Dick right. Stane. Maybe, maybe you don't, you don't maybe like you the country. Be here. Because when yeah. you had the ultimate honor to go the ultimate support of your country, you had Papa. Right. They need us in the press row because we would throw that question at him. Well, what about you? <laughs> Maybe you don't like it so much. Now, I wanted to throw this at you. This guy, I, I, some people suggested that he's a sick fuck of the week. We being the critical thinkers uh, at the I Am Rapport Stereo podcast, uh, home of the most disruptive podcast in the world. We know Lenny Dykstra as a New York Met. I don't know him personally. I've never met Lenny Dykstra. Uh, he's a New York man. He's a character. He's had a crazy life. Uh, uh, he, he, you know, obviously had some drug issues. He's made a fortune after playing baseball. Then he got indicted that it was like illegal, like through some, you know, Wall Street scamming, all this stuff. Okay. He's considered a hothead. He's, he's way out there. The other day he was in an Uber. Now we have spoken repetitively about being in Ubers. And how these guys, they don't leave you alone. And how the Uber drivers, they don't shut the fuck up. And they don't mind their business. So while in an Uber car, in the tri-state area in New York, I think it was in Queens, might have been in Manhattan, going to Jersey, uh, Lenny Dykstra asked the Uber driver to change the address of where he was going. Apparently, the Uber driver refused um, I guess you're supposed to do it through the app. Um, also, the Uber driver is not supposed to talk or have bad breath. That should be a rule. <laughs> it should be a basic rule. How are right. you should be the only thing. Thank you for driving me should be the second thing. And, yeah. and, and chewing gum should be mandatory. While you're on the job at Uber, you should be forced. It should be a, a part of the job policy that you chew gum when a passenger is in your car. Correct. Absolutely. No talking. There's no need to talk. Your job is to drive me to my destination. I don't care what, where you're from. I don't care where you're from, how long you've been driving, how much you enjoy being a driver, any of it. Right. This no. is not a blind date. We're, we're, this is a service business. And if you are driving me, keep a piece of mint gum, whatever brand you want, 
in your mouth. I don't want to smell your breath in the entire car. You smell like shit. That being said, Lenny Dykstra was in the car. He got into a beef with the, with the Uber driver. Apparently, he pulled the gun on the Uber driver. The police were called. They, they found the gun. They found some weed. They found some ecstasy. And they found some of that booger sugar. Oh, man. So Lenny Dykstra's back in trouble, but I'm thinking this this whole thing could have been inspired by a yappy, nosy Uber driver that could have yeah. pushed poor Lenny Dykstra over the edge. A am I being too compassionate? I wanted to see what you thought, Mr. Moody. Man, it's fucked up to know that Lenny is still skiing out there, still wilding. But man, you're, you're, you're on point with it. You're not. You're, you're right where you need to be. Just fucked up for my man Lenny D, man, to be still skiing out there, man. Damn. Skiing. Um, the internet, Twitter is some garbage. Uh, the actress Rebel Wilson, who's funny, uh, she always plays the fat girl. I'm not, this is what the role she plays. She makes jokes about her weight. Uh, when she's in character, she makes jokes about her weight out of character. Okay? That's part right. of her brand, being like the chubby funny girl blonde oh, I like her I think she's a she's a good actress she's a funny actress okay the internet mainly Twitter because this is where all like all all the all the real bullshit happens accused other people of fat shaming this actress rebel Wilson rebel Wilson then said no I was not fat shamed and then Twitter and the internet started to argue with Rebel Wilson whether or not she had, in fact, been fat shamed. She basically was saying, I have no problem with what they said. I don't care what they said. I don't consider it fat shame. And then people started arguing with her about how she should feel about people commenting on her weight. This is this is where we're at now. This is that sucker shit. Uh -huh. This is what they do to me. White cats come to me telling me how bad it is for black people in America. This is the same shit they do to me. <laughs> these people this are these people are first of all, they're they're butter soft. And I don't mean butter soft I am Rapport Stereo Podcast t-shirts, which are always available at district lines forward slash I am Rappaport. Mm -hmm. I do not mean those t-shirts. I don't mean butter soft like butter soft I am Rapport Stereo Podcast that are available at districtlines.com forward slash I am Rapport. I mean like in their soul. They're bitch made. In their yeah. soul, they are just grieving and just wallowing in their guilt. I, I don't I don't understand it. She said, I have no problem with what they say. I'm comfortable in my skin. I'm comfortable with the comments. I don't feel like I got fat shamed. And then people are trying to say to her, yes, you did. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. She doesn't feel that way. You can't make her. It's like they're bullying her and they're thinking, it's crazy, man. Yo. Yep. That's how they come at you, man. The Calvary on uh, on Twitter. And um, since you're in the acting, you're still, you know, in the acting uh, category, I want to quote Biggie Smalls on this guy. Uh, he he will be more gone than Freeman. <laughs> Mor Morgan Freeman. Yes. It's over. Well, from, from what I've read, this is the beginning of the end. And uh, it seems like there are witnesses. These things were done in public. So to quote Biggie Smalls, you'll be more gone than Freeman. It's over, B. It's over. Morgan Freeman, one of the most respected, uh, successful movie stars of the last 20 years, has been accused of sexual harassment uh, 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 verbally uh, by yeah. eight women. Uh, witnesses. There's witnesses. There are people co-signing. It was a whole investigation. Yeah. You know, it's, it's too soon. To, to speak on it, you know, there's been rumors about uh, Morgan Freeman and his step-granddaughter or his granddaughter, Damn. I don't know, for years. Easy Reader. Easy Reader is gone from the electric company. He is gone. Let me tell you, let me, let me read the epitaph. This motherfucker is gone, man. I, I read that shit on CNN, and they have witnesses, and it was said, a lot of, a lot of greasy shit was said in public. Yo, he knew it when all this shit was going down with these other cats. He knew the other shoe was going to drop for him. It's just a matter of time. And Yo, here we are. And it ain't over. I, I am, I'm not going to say names, but it is not over. Right. 
It's bad to be famous, man. <laughs> At this time, it's bad to be a star, man. You don't know, yo, you don't know what these motherfuckers, you know, they could take you misconstruing you saying hello or you look nice. They could just turn that shit around and your, your shit is over. Legacy ruined. Everything. And it's just, man, it bugged out, man. Um, Miles, let me get a siren. Yeah, that's it. Because we, we got a stick man alert. We, we, we got a stick man alert. This, this guy just went from stick man obscurity to the stick man hall of fame. Brazilian Ooh. soccer legend. I know, I know I'm not going to pronounce his name correctly. R- 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 they call him Ronaldo. Let's just call him Ronaldo or R- R- Ronaldino. I'll just say Ronaldo so I don't keep screwing it up. Right. Listen, if, 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 if you follow sports, you, you've seen him. He's like one of the greatest soccer players of all time. Went from stickman obscurity right into the stickman hall of fame. Yep. My man married. And they're all aware and all, they're all in sync. Two days ago, he married his two fiancés in a private ceremony in Rio de Janeiro. Mm, I love money. I love this dude. Yo, this is, this is game. They're yeah. totally in sync. The girls are happy. Ronaldo is happy. They are starting a family. I, I don't know what to say. Like, yo, my man, yo, this is straight P-I-M-P, straight oh. stick man shit. And to be clear, a stick man is not an ir- irresponsible fuck. A stick man yeah. is one who does it in silence, does it with class. There's no complaints. Everything yep. is above board. My man has been quietly skeeting for 20-something years. He's from Brazil. He's a worldwide star. He's an international Soccer playing star. He decided to settle down with not one, but two of his fiancés. They had a private mm. ceremony. What can I say? Uh, I, I love this dude. And that is not unusual on this planet. On, like only in America, like, like certain societies. But that's the norm for men to have more than one uh, uh, wife. So, yo... That's what it is on the planet. That's the that's the norm. <laughs> Here, it's different. But yo, shout out to my man. Uh, what's what's his name? Right, R- Ronaldo. He put it down. Yo, yo my man put it and down. Shout out to the women, and shout out to those women that said, you know what? We a crew. It's all of us. And and, no- and good luck to to your family and uh, yep. the rest of your life. Uh, however you want to do it, as unconventional as some people might find it. Uh, do you, Ronaldo? Yeah, hell yeah, two, two, and they and they with it, and and everybody's cool. Yo, that's the norm around the world. Just you know, in certain societies, it's not not uh, tolerated. All right, next, the Charles Oakley New York Knicks James Dolan saga continues. Um, you know we rock with Oak till the wheels fall off. Video footage has surfaced. Surveillance footage from the garden, the incident that happened with Oakley and the security guards when they approached him. There's footage showing the security guards talking to Dolan and then Dolan sending him over to Oakley and then giving him the thumbs up. Like, like, right. like this whole thing was like, yo, go, go get him, go get him out of here. And Oakley has said this from the beginning. He wasn't doing anything wrong. They said he might have been a little of inebriated, but if he didn't do anything wrong, he didn't do anything wrong. We, we stand with Oak. We rock with Oak. Of course, we have the Buttersoft I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast, Charles Oakley, King of New York t-shirt. Oak is standing firm. He, will, he, he has filed a defamation and discrimination suit against the Garden and Dolan. And this footage apparently uh, makes things look good for, for our guy, Charles Oakley's case. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's just more disruption uh, uh, for the New York Knicks. Uh, this never should have happened. Uh, he's the consummate New York Knick. Uh, left uh, blood and guts on the floor everywhere he played, but he did his best work uh, as a New York Knick in the late 80s and, and throughout the 90s. Yeah, absolutely. Oak, you got a case, and nobody makes a move like that without the consent 
of the guy who owns the place. <laughs> exactly. They don't just approach anybody. Like right. he, they got the nod from the owner, and uh, this shit ain't this shit ain't going away, and it's gonna be figured out in a court of law. All right, Hell coming yeah. up next on the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. All right, the young shooter, Dean Collins, Judge Dean Collins. Uh, 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 yeah. he, he, he he stepped Residing. in. He, he this yeah he stepped in to reside. Uh, we have a award winning segment of Sick Fuck of the Week or Beyond with the young shooter, Dean Collins. Coming up next, Miles Jordan. Take us in there with something funky. Take us in there with a smacker. And then we have offensive tackle, 13 years of NFL action from the Oakland Raiders, Donald Penn. Give me a test. Yeah, test, test, test. Test, test, Dean. Test. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here, man. Make sure my fucking mic is on. Your mic's good. No, Give me I a heard, test. No, no, no. I heard what happened the other day. Moody was recorded. You weren't following. I'm not doing it twice. So make sure it's on. You're on. It's recording? As as promised, the young shooter is back with yet another episode of Sick Fuck of the Week or, or Beyond. Beyond. Now, I, can I say it with you? No. No. No, you can't. You can't say it with me. And, I, and, and, and let me tell you something. We did an episode the other day in premium. Yeah. In primetime, PTP. We call it primetime PTP, podcasting. Yeah. Uh, and Judge Gerald Moody. Yeah. Was was in the court. Uh, and now you're saying, well, you heard that episode was good, but you feel like you're a better, more f- uh, a fairer, more unbiased judge. I'm definitely I'm definitely a more unbiased judge. Um, than I mean, Judge Moody. I, I there's I have nothing against Judge Moody. We're both we're both with just different judges. We, that's true. That's you true. know what Listen, I mean. I mean, the I sick was, fucks are out there. It's up to the judges to decide right. uh, 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 if they're sick fucks of the week or beyond oh, yeah. sick fuck. I mean, I was. The first judge, because we did the first episode That's together, true. so, I, you know, but it's neither here nor there. Why don't we just start the sick Dean, if the you sick fart fucks. again while I didn't we're doing this fart, podcast, man. you shit bag. Dude, I didn't fart. Go you have like, the, go, t- wear a diaper and go <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> oh, wear a the man one, diaper. Um, listen, when you're shooting a podcast, wear a man diaper. First don't, of all, no one can smell anything, and you're the one with 10 candles in here, because you've obviously you're, you're, been you're, shitting you're, your fucking pants. And you're busting through the candles. I'm not doing anything. You smell like shit. Let's get to it. You guys know the deal. Uh, the Sick Fuck of the Week is an award-winning segment. Uh, sometimes we can't figure out if people even be uh, deserve to be on this podcast uh, and be considered as Sick Fucks of the Week. Wait, so we leave it into the judge's hand to say, is it a Sick Fuck of the Week or is he beyond? You said award-winning, by the way. This is an award-winning segment. I was a part of the first one. I didn't, I didn't get any award. Yeah, I haven't I, heard I about any awards. I keep all the awards. I take all the credit. I, that, that, that's okay. how it works. Okay. That's how it works. That I get fair. all the ideas from other people, and then, and then you I take, take the all credit. the credit. I have no shame in my game. Like Murder, Doc, and Chill, HBO, Go, and Blow. Yeah, all of it. Those all are the ones it. I came up with. I haven't yes. seen any proceeds. So yes, not, well, it's, right. it, it is not. It's not a problem for me to do that. Okay, I'll, um, I'll just lawyer up and uh, let's. Is that a threat? Take it however you want. Okay. Sick fuck of the week or beyond the sick fuck, Judge Dean Collins. Court is now in session. Yes. A flight landing in Orlando from Colorado Springs took off in Colorado Springs. Was landing in Orlando, Florida. Not good to be or not. Once you say Florida, you know things are going to get. You're like kooky. Colorado. That's cool, but then you're landing in a place that you, sh- you don't know if you want to be there. <laughs> Nothing gets Orlando. Year old, a 59 year old man apparently uh, lost control of himself on a flight. It's a Frontier Airlines oh. flight. Now these are the flights. I've said it once, I've said it many times, when you are flying uh, uh, short flights on these, now listen, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not questioning anybody's pockets and what they could afford, but uh, it, it is documented that on these airlines, Frontier, and these sort of- They're shit. I took Spirit Airlines, yeah. never fucking fly Spirit you, again. Okay, Frontier, Spirit, Spirit all that they're stuff. all shit. Okay, but you gotta do what you gotta do to fly. Flying is overly expensive. A 59-year-old man punched a deaf- mm. Pregnant woman and and her service dog while the plane was in the air. He punched a deaf pregnant woman and then took a shot at her fucking dog. The man complained of, as be, of being allergic to dogs as the plane descended. And, and when it was being taxied to the gate, he got into it. Or her dog, which is a service animal, a great Dane, woke up. 
uh, 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 he said the dog was taking up more space, blah, 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 blah. He started complaining to the deaf woman who probably uh, a lot of things were getting lost in translation. <laughs> he punched her and then punched the Great Dane, a service dog. Is this man a sick fuck of the week or is he beyond a sick fuck of the week? Judge Collins? I mean, I I couldn't hit the, the gavel harder on this one of, of going beyond sick fuck. Wow. And I'll tell you why. Beyond sick yeah, fuck. Yeah, because you know well, what? Well, you know why? I, I think I know why. Go ahead. No, go ahead, I'm going to tell you why. There's so go many ahead, different factors. But I <laughs> thank you. Thank you for calling me your honor. Um, but there's so many different factors. But the one thing that stands out to me is you're allergic to the dog. Therefore, you punch the dog. I'm allergic to fucking grass, trees. I'm allergic to cats and dogs. You don't see me fucking ripping down trees. You don't see me fucking attacking dogs. I stay away from them. And you punch the dog, who's a service animal. You punched a woman. And not only did you punch a woman, but you punched a pregnant woman who's going to have a child. And she's handicapped, disabled, deaf. You, my friend... Should be fucking locked up mm. behind bars. I don't want to. You shouldn't see the light of day. I don't care what. How long excuse. would you give him? Uh, five five years? No, no longer. You're gonna get longer than that. Okay. Yeah, I want you to get five years for each each of the factors that you did. So you're getting five for, you for play, punching huh? a pregnant woman. Okay. You're getting five you're right. for, hit, for hitting the dog, and you're getting five for doing it to somebody that was handicapped. So that's I'm giving. I'm sentencing 15 years to the beyond the sick fuck. Guilty. All right. The sentence has been given out. Um, I didn't set this up. I did not set this up. Okay. Uh, the, the sick fucks are, are put on the docket mm -hmm. and I present them to the judge. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, in Florida, again, in Marion County, Florida, a teacher has been placed on a leave of absence as wildlife officials are doing an investigation. The teacher had students drown raccoons in cages during class as part of an experiment in an agriculture class. The, stu the students did it. So not only did, he, did, he, did this happen in class, he had the students do it. Is it a man or a woman who had the students do it? It's an, a man. Okay. A man in, in Forest High School um, in Marion County, uh, agriculture science class. Uh, kids brought home video uh, to their parents. Kid parents were like, what the fuck? Am I Live watching? raccoons. Live raccoons. They're not dead. No. And he didn't do it. He had the students do it. But I have a question. Go ahead. Throw it to judge. Should we be considering the students that participated as sick fucks of the week too? So it's two twofold. Is this teacher ah. sick fuck of the week, beyond sick fuck of the week? And should some of these students be up for consideration in this? Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this one uh, a sick fuck of the week. I'm not going to go beyond. But I will say that the students are, are definitely up for consideration because, listen, when I was in school, what happened to dissecting a fucking cat or a frog? Right. And you know what? Even a cat dissecting. They, they, they do that. They dissect cats. I dead. would never they're, they're do dead. that. They're I dead. would never, okay. ever. It was hard enough for me in seventh grade science class to dissect a frog. And guess what? I, I, w I didn't want to do that. So I literally, I, I said, hey, guys, this is just kind of fucked. This is fucked up. I'm going to opt out of this operation. Now, if I'm in school today and the guy says, I need to drown. I, 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 I want to do this and I want all of you guys to do it for me. Drown 14 live raccoons. I'd be like, hold on, guys. This is fucked up. Maybe Especially we just in don't this day do this. And age with all the kids and yeah. they're protesting this. Yeah, but then you're PC. drowning raccoons? Yeah. Yeah, I I'm going to go ahead and say the kids are most... De I I'd be surprised if one of those kids didn't just say, you know what, this is fucked up. I'm going to leave now. This is fucked up. Okay, maybe we'll do your ruling. Do your sentence. Uh, I already gave the sentencing. The kids, the kids, they're not up for consideration. They are sick fucks. The guy's a sick fuck for making the kids do his fucking sick fuck But not work. beyond. There's no beyond there. To me, there's no beyond. It's a sick fuck, though. Okay, fair enough. This one is, this one's way out there. This one is way out there. A Texas doctor is accused of false diagnosis $240 million health care scheme. And what he was doing was falsely diagnosing patients to administer chemotherapy and other treatments for people who did not need it. So he'd give you a false diagnosis, give you chemotherapy, although you didn't need it. But they would come in and say, I think I have cancer or, or All what? All sorts of things. He's a roommate. Cancer, degenerative diseases, 
arthritis. The more diagnosis he give with the chemo, the more money he would bring bring in. The people are sitting there thinking they're dying. Chemo is a Specifically serious drug. Specifically chemotherapy, Com- right? Chemotherapy and other medical procedures going up to $240 million. This is a doctor. People go there think, thinking, you know, oh, this guy's going to help me. He's going to save me. I could trust him. Thank you, Dr. Schmidt. Thank you, Dr. whatever What's your name What's this doctor's is? name so we can get it out there? This doctor's like to hear name, the name is Dr. George Zamora Quisita. I can't pronounce his fuck's name. Dr. George Zamora Quisita. I, you don't need to say anymore. He's beyond sick fuck. I mean, how do you? How, how can it not be beyond sick fuck? You know, I, I'm going in there for uh, I got a fucking cold, and the doctor is going to try and tell me I got cancer. I need chemo. I'm sorry, you're sick fuck. You're beyond sick fuck, and um, that's a that's a life imprisonment to me. Okay. All right, like you're ruining people's lives by making them go through that chemotherapy and false diagnosis. Yeah, because you could you. I mean, chemotherapy attacks your body. It really is a, a tough procedure to come back from. Like, like my ulcerative colitis, when yeah. I had to do, like, chemothera- chemotherapy is no joke. No, and someone might say, no, well, what about, and I say, overruled. Done. Next case. In Illinois. 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 No, I, Illinois. Nope. You don't say noise. Everyone, everyone yeah. learns that in, like, second grade. No, I never, I, well, maybe I was suspended that week. Illinois. In Illinois. A man stripped down naked. Sick fuck. Wait, I didn't finish. You, you, first you said Illinois, then you said naked man. I say sick fuck. Okay, so he's automatically sick fuck. Sick fuck. Okay, a, a man stripped down naked outside of Burger King because they were closed. <laughs> he started banging his head on the concrete, started banging his head on the glass. He was then arrested nude outside the Burger King. Is this man a sick fuck of the week or beyond oh, yeah. sick fuck? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, 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 and switch things up with this one. Mm. At first, I said he was a sick fuck because he said naked. But I'd like to say, listen, I've been in this situation. Y- you think Taco Bell's open. It, um, they say it's open till, t- till 1 a.m. It, it, you get there at fucking 1, it's shut. It, it's closed. I'm going to go ahead and say this guy, um, he's dedicated. He, he was hungry. He really wanted that Burger King. I think he may be a sick fuck for wanting Burger King over anything else, but I, I you like You don't the, think he's a sick fuck for stripping naked? I, How is that a I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it, but I, I have to give him, um, I have to give him some credit for, for just really going the extra mile to try and get that burger. I mean, look, Whoppers, uh, they're good at, at a certain hour if they're closed and he wants to strip naked and bang his head on the wall. That's his problem. Some people may look at it as a sick fuck. I say get it out of my courtroom. I, this is petty shit. I don't want to deal with it. Uh, let's move on. This, uh, this guy sounds like he had a, a bad case of the munchies and he was a little high and he took things a little too far. Uh, please give me something a little bit stronger than this man. Not a problem, Judge. Uh, Your Honor, the next case. Now... This is a tragic case, and I don't like to bring tragedy, but this is so far out and so wacky. Um, a man and a woman who both look like sick fucks, and, and, and when it comes down to sick fucks of the week, I do judge a book by its cover. Okay. Okay, that's, that's how the whole you really genre can. of yeah. sick fucks of the week uh, were started. I, I am going to judge a book by its cover. I said the other day, if you have a full face of tattoos mm-hmm. and a rotting front tooth— I automatically say that's a sick fuck. Uh, I, I'm with you on that 100. I, I, I hate to, you know, judge. You know, no, thou shalt not judge and no. pass judgment in the Bible and the Torah and all yeah. that stuff and God and, and yoga. I get it. And you're in my court. You have to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So I, I do appreciate you saying that. Okay. Um, final case, uh, and and this was presented by a few, not just one, a few. I'd say about five different people. Uh, brought this case to me, and I'm presenting it to uh, Judge Dean Because we're going to have to take a recess after this, so if we could just get this one out. Yes. Now, this woman, on paper, and I do judge a book by its cover, doesn't look like uh, a true blue sick fuck. She's actually attractive, mm. uh, a woman. It's like a Casey Anthony type. Not, but blonde. Okay. Like, uh, just a oh, cute, like Knox. a pretty girl. Like, you would say, on one of your dating apps, you you would definitely be like... Swipe right. Yes. She'd get more swipe... Like, we're going to... Yeah, well, let's hear what the fuck she did. Brittany Zamora, a married middle school teacher. Brittany Zamora in Arizona. Oh, God. Is accused of performing oral sex on a 13-year-old boy in the school. 
She was flirting with him in classroom tra- uh, chats. Other t- kids said she had been being um, in- inappropriate with him during school. Uh, then she sent him pictures. Again, she's married. This is a married woman. She's 26 year old. She's been arrested. She had sex with a 13 year old boy. Now, when you were in school, Dean, did any yeah. teachers ever try to have their way with you? You know, no, um, no, they didn't. No, they. Why would they? What do you mean? Why? Would I'm they? just. I mean, it's I, not why would they, but there was I, there was a teacher named uh, Miss Poole yeah. who was really hot. Yeah. Uh, if I was fourteen or fifteen, that would that would have been a dream for me. But for for this case, I would like to say, um, and she's married, and she's married. So imagine if your wife is cheating on you, and then you find out not only is she cheating on you, which is terrible. She's cheating on you with a student, okay, bad, and then she's cheating on you with a 13-year-old student. I, I don't think the marriage thing even has to come into play in this but, but situation. You gotta, I'm just thinking no, about I the know, husband. No, I know, as the other like guy, the, you're the like, husband's like, huh? oh my God, honey, you, you're you cheated fu- on like, me? I wonder if, if, if he was in this courtroom, what would he want the judge to say? Judge, please, what is your verdict on this? We've heard these stories so many times. It's, it's an epidemic. And, 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 and it is an epidemic, and if the roles were reversed... Might I add, it would probably get, to me, I'm going to just go ahead and say it, a little bit more media attention. It's a little bit more controversial. A lot of people think that uh, uh, young boys like maybe to, to no, have this, this sort of a thing. This, yeah, is, this is a predator. This is an animal. This is a predator. She's an animal. I'm going to go ahead and say sick fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just I can't give the beyond because I've heard it so many times. I, I'm not excusing that, but she's 26. Um, it's fucking disgusting. It's 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 uh, it's statutory rape, right? I mean, statutory rape. Uh, now, if her husband was it was with us in this courtroom, would you be able to look him in the face and say, "I am only considering your wife a sick fuck and not a beyond"? Sick uh, fuck? That's tough because I can't imagine him. You know, he goes, "Honey, you cheated on me. I need to find this man. Who is he? I'm gonna fucking beat him up." And then she goes, "Well, it's this kid on the baseball team, and, and little Tommy. You know, he's the second second baseman and you're thinking <laughs> fuck uh, this is the fucking guy yeah this at that is the point guy I, I don't know what i would do you know what do you tell your friends so um, my heart goes out to him uh out of everybody and my heart goes out to the to the child because 13 is, is really fucking young and uh the woman's a pig she's a fucking <laughs> pig um and and she should definitely be behind bars i can't give the lock I, her up I, I say lock her up for a minimum of 10 years okay um and a maximum of, of 30. I think she can maybe change her ways. Okay. Uh, but she's going to go ahead and, and go under the sick fuck of the week and not beyond. Um, that's it. I need to get lunch. This court is adjourned. All right. Well, Judge Collins, thank you once again for joining us on another award-winning segment of Sick Fuck of the Week or Beyond yeah. Sick Fuck. That's cool. That, that echoed that time for sure. All right. The judge made his decisions. I don't argue with the judge. Uh, the Honorable Judge Dean Collins, sick fuck of the week or beyond. The courtroom is now closed. Uh, coming up next, I promise you, this is a shit-talking extravaganza from the Oakland Raiders. Offensive tackle, pro bowler, Donald Penn. Yeah. Test, test, test. Let me get a test, Donald. Test, test, test. All right, all right, all right. I'm hyped about this podcast. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the way you play. I'm a fan of the way you carry yourself. You're a vet. Donald Penn, covering the blind side of the $100 million man. Derek Carr, thank you for rocking me on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. It's crazy you say you're a fan because I'm a fan. Shit, I'm a <laughs> fan, man. Because I'm a fan, man. I, I'm a fan from all back in the day, all your work, man. So I'm a, I'm a big fan, so it's, this is um, surreal. All right, well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. First of all, um, before we get into football, you played basketball in high school. Yeah. yeah you were all state, all city, all what? I was all city and all state um, my senior year in football and basketball. I grew up thinking I was going to go to the NBA, man. That was my dream. Uh, my dad played basketball. I didn't play football to sophomore year of high school. And, uh, you know, it just picked up well. And uh, I stopped getting taller, so I had to, had to pick one. And, you know, not too many schools were coming at me for basketball. I had a lot more schools coming for me for football. So, you know, I kind of chose football, and it worked out for me. How, how, how tall are you? I'm 6'5". So, so for basketball, that's a two guard. Maybe, in, in, you know, 15 years ago, that could be a, a three. You know, maybe if you're sick, 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 that's a Charles Barkley power forward. But that those, I mean, he's a freak. That's crazy. That's what they used to call me. They used to call me Baby Barkley. <laughs> Were you like a Barkley? Yeah, they used to call me Baby Barkley. That's how I got my, 
that's why I transitioned so well in the football because of my basketball background. You know, I, I got I got great feet. I call my feet sweet feet. You know, what I mean, I got great feet. Um, and I I feel like that's because of my basketball background. You know, I play a lot of basketball during the off season too. So when you played in your prime of uh, uh, playing basketball, you you could you could dunk and all that. I ain't start dunking to college. Really, it was crazy. I ain't start dunking to college. You know, when I first got to college, I. Um, you know, that, that different weight program and I lost a little bit more weight and then I was doing some ridiculous stuff in college. I was like, damn, I wish I was doing this in high school. <laughs> so, so you still play ball? Yeah, I do. I'm, I'm recovering from my injury. So this is the first off season I haven't been able to do it because I had surgery in December, but using an off season, I, as soon as I get back out here, I, I hop in the um, adult league with my boys and I, I play, you know, once a week and sometimes on Saturdays I go 24 hour play pickup games. Yeah, that would be you. You, I mean, I'm sure you could play, but I mean, ro- a pick and roll with you is a that's a that's a that's a fucking pick running oh, yeah. into you. That's a pick. It's definitely a pick, man. I, I love basketball, man. I mean, it's still my love. Like I think after I retire, I, I will coach basketball for football. Okay, so NFL players. I mean, you see videos of like these dudes. Or you'll see them at like celebrity games. I've played with guys at celebrity games throughout your years in the NFL. What NFL players legitimately have? basketball game like who could play it's got to be the receivers like some of these dudes now are they're like these receivers are like two guards you got one now martavis bryant What's, so what what dudes have you seen that could play ball quarterbacks who who got game Coop, amari cooper got some game okay uh dc got Derek Carr got some game too you'd be surprised he got a nice little shot man dc got some game uh you know amari cooper uh who else uh it's a couple other guys that ain't coming to my, my my head right now, but a lot of guys in in, in NFL could play. I mean, they they do it during the off season, but you got to watch it so much you now because you know with all these injuries and right. stuff and and everything is a little tough. But you know, when I play, I just don't think about it. I just I just go out there and play because you know I love it. And it's, you got to understand, basketball is a totally different shape than football. So you know, when I get out there and run, like my body is way more sore than it is after a football game. Like, From playing like, basketball. Yeah, because it's different movements, different, you know, jumping and stuff. That's like, funny. Like, after I'm done, I'm like, ooh. I'm like, man, you know, I'm, I'm hurting more than I, than I did when I played football. So who you got? We're, we're in the playoffs now at NBA. Uh, Cavs, Celtics, Golden State, Warriors. What's your prediction? Like, who, who do you like? Who do you – I mean, LeBron is – I mean, we don't even need to talk about this dude. This dude is – I never seen anything like it. Where's your head at with the playoffs? Since you're you love ball, Lakers. You, you, listen, my Lakers. man. Listen, that conversation. Is, we put that on pause. You guys are on pause with Lakers. the rest of the damn league. Lakers all day. Nah, but I got to. Uh, you know, I play in Oakland, man. So I got to stick with Golden State. And, right. Uh, you know, uh, KD and Clay, they good friends and stuff. So that's dope. You know, I feel like whoever comes out the West, I, I feel like the the Houston and um, Golden State is a, is the finals. Right. That series is the final. So whoever wins that, they win it at all. That's how I feel. I want Golden State to win so bad. Yeah, I, I want them to beat the shit out of Houston. And then I want them to and then and then although I want LeBron to lose to Boston, I, I, my favorite scenario is them losing to, to, to Golden State again, four game sweep, beat their asses. And Boston really surprised me. I didn't think they were gonna make it this far with all the injuries they went through. Like Boston really surprised me. They got some good momentum going. And a good coach. Yeah, exactly. And they got them young players are really stepping up and playing good for them. But I'm, I'm, I'm like you. I think um, you know it's going to be hard to um, beat Golden State and the way Steph came back and the way they're gelling. It's, it's going to be tough. Um, all right. So coaches. Speaking of coaches, you guys uh, just acquired one of the most charismatic, famous, biggest personalities. You know, he won the Super Bowl. He coached you at Tampa, um, and then he became like. You know, a mega star, a mega personality with his Gruden camps and just his way. And you don't know, is this guy bullshitting with his face? Like, because sometimes I watch Gruden, I'm like, is he fucking around? Like, he doesn't know that his face looks like that when he's on TV. But I guess he seems so, he so much loves football and he's so intense. And he seems like he's almost elated by talking about football. Tell me what John Gruden is like. Man, um... He's a football maniac. He's a football brain. He's a football head. I mean, he he'll go into meetings sometime and he'll control the whole meeting. He'll tell every single person their job, from my job to the receiver to the quarterback's reads to the center to everything. And he brings so much intens- intensity and passion. It's like it's like man. It's like man. You want to play for this guy? You like man. You know the way he comes and the way he talks, the way he, he carries himself and and brings that energy. It's like a different energy. You know, it's like that. When I was in um, Tampa, and then you know, now with him being away from football, it, it felt like his knowledge just took like ten steps, ten steps forward. You know, he got so much. He's studying. He's been studying football for so long, and now it's just like 
it, it's just like I, I can't wait to get stuff started. Like, you know, we had a little uh, mini camp a couple of weeks ago, and he was even saying he was like, he's like, he was like, fuck, this offense gonna be good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 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 like we, we gonna be good. We got some weapons and the, the stuff he's um doing and the coaching staff he brought in. Like, he he brought in a couple of former head coaches. You know, um, Coach Tom, Tom Cable is my old line coach. He's doing the run. Um, I think we're gonna be able to run the ball very well, and you know, it's gonna set up everything. We got we got some good weapons, but. He's 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 a maniac when it comes to football. He's gonna he's gonna coach you hard, but he's gonna love you and he's gonna get the most out of you. That's that's cool. Is it, what what do you think? It's like now you're a vet, but you know you got some of these kids that are 22, 23 years old. They don't know John Gruden. They grew up watching him in the booth. To them, he's like a celebrity. You know, it's almost like if not the same, but like Stephen A. Smith. Like they don't they didn't see him as a coach. What do you think it's like for these young kids when they got this guy her who's a star? Like, you know, Derek Carr is a star, Coop is a star, you're a star. But like, as far as like recognizability, John Gruden is a big. What do you think it's like for for your your rookies, your second year players, when you got this charismatic guy who they've been watching their whole life, and now all of a sudden he's their coach? I mean, I, I think they got to. You know walk what I'm in. saying? Yeah, it's crazy. I think they got to walk in. They kind of in awe at first, and then you know, once he starts talking to them and, and starts talking football, they're like. Okay, okay, he's a coach. He 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 ain't just a, a TV personality. He's he's a coach. He 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 knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about, you know. And uh, you know, when he when he comes in, he's a he's a great player coach, you know. Not to me, some coaches aren't player coaches, you know. What I mean, he's a great player coach and he he could be a player coach and be be serious at the same time and handle stuff, you know, but but um, you know, I I know him. He probably, you know, when them young guys come in, he probably be like, all right, it's the reality checks over. Now let's get to work. You know, right? I'm John Gruden. It's over. I was on TV. I'm that. But now I need to get the most out of you. Let me see what what you're gonna be best at. Let me see where I can use you. Let's get to work. Cause I, all he wants to do is win. And you know, he got a big chip on his shoulder right now coming in. You know, a lot of people are doubting him. You know, saying he shouldn't deserve all that money. And um, you know, he's bringing in a group of guys to to back up his, his stuff. So 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 we could be good and. You know, I'm happy he's back in football. You know, one one thing he told me when he first got the job, when we talked, he was like, man, Donald, he's like, I missed the game. Mm. He said, I missed the game. I'm sure. Yeah, and um, I was like, yeah, and, um, you know, the meetings are – the means are fun, you know. Listen to him; he's fired up. He'll he'll show some old clips of uh, some guy, some new clips and stuff. He he'll he'll go through stuff like plays we put in. He'll show he'll show Jerry Rice doing it. He'll he'll show um, Tim Brown doing it, you know. And it's just stuff like that. It gets guys motivated. It gets guys going. It gets guys wanting to play for him. That's dope. Like so, it's really like that that enthusiasm that we saw as a broadcaster. You're getting that firsthand as a coach, and you're getting all the details and the special sauce and all that stuff. Yeah, and he was like that before he got in the broadcast too. He was the same way. When in Tampa, he he controlled uh, means. He, he he got us fired up. Um, you know, he's he's a great guy, and um, you know, I'm really happy to be able to get another round with him. That's dope. I, I mean, I don't know. Like they keep putting you out to pastor. You know, that's the end of Donald Penn. Uh, he's holding out. Uh, you know, is he worth the money? Uh, you know, uh, Tampa Bay didn't want to pay you. Oakland, they hold out. Do you imagine yourself this whole thing? Now, I'm a, I'm a New York Giants fan, but everybody loves the Raiders. Everybody loves the Raiders. Do you imagine yourself making it to when they get to Vegas? And how do you feel about, as a, like you grew up as a fan, for me, it's sacrilegious. This is just me talking. Now, I don't want to get you involved with this shit, but this is just, it's sacrilegious that the Oakland Raiders are not in Oakland. They're going to wind up playing in fucking Las Vegas. First of all, well, what is your opinion on that? Second of all, you're, you're, you're a vet, but you got a 21-year-old kid. He doesn't know where the fuck he is. He's from, you know, backwoods wherever, swamp, and, and then he's in Vegas. He's got, you know, a million-dollar contract. Uh, anything can happen to these kids. So what is your, your take on, on the Raiders leaving Oakland? They're so, that's like the fucking, the, the New York Yankees leaving the Bronx. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right, I know they right. came to L.A., but it's like the, the Oakland Raiders deserve to be in Oakland. I don't care if the fans travel or not. To me, that's d- fucked up. <laughs> nah, you know, I grew up a Raider fan, so it's like it's like surreal. You know, it's, it's, it's a dream come true, me playing for the team I grew up for. But, you know, I was a little disappointed when I when I found that out. I'm not going to lie or sugarcoat it. You know, uh, one thing that we're trying to make sure we do, we're trying to make sure we bring a championship to Oakland before we leave, you know, leave with a bang. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, from what I heard and from what I – Talked to with Mr. Davis. You know, he tried to do everything possible to get a new stadium in um, Oakland. Our stadium is bad. Right. Our it's facility, all, It's from the 80s yeah, and the 70s, right? Our facilities are bad. And, um, you know, he, he, I heard he tried his hardest 
to do it. He wanted to stay in Oakland, try his hardest. And, you know, one thing about Mr. Davis, man, he loves his team. He mm -hmm. loves his players. So if he's making this decision, he's making the right decision. And, you know, I'm going to support him and back him, though. But I am a little sad that we're leaving Oakland, you know, because it is, it is, it is going to be tough. It's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a, a different adjustment. You know, I, I don't think I'm going to make it to Oakland. I, I only plan on playing two more years. You know, I'm going to. I want to be around for my. I want to be around my kids more often and stuff like that. Uh, so you know, I got. I, I told him I got two more years on me. This contract's probably gonna be my last. And um, you know, we, we never know. I'm not gonna. I'm not like Coach Green told me. He said, "Don't predict. Just play your butt all these next two years, and we'll see what happens." But right. you know, I want to give it my all these last two. Try to get a championship. But it's gonna be a hard adjustment. Um, going to Vegas, like you said, for them young kids. You know, coming in with a pocket full of money, all that temptation. You know, all the not even the temptation, just the, the the tables, gambling, like the whole thing. You know, um, you know, the clubs out there stay open five in the morning, you know. I don't to, think they close five to, in the morning. I think some of them shits open at five. Yeah, you know, trying to you know, but um I heard they're gonna our facility's gonna be far away from the strip. Oh, dude. Listen, uh, yeah, if, like if it's fifteen minutes, how far could it possibly yeah, be, you're man? Right, you're right. That's funny. They're gonna try to put it. Well, I guess they have to put it because it's logistically, right? Yeah, but you know what? I I, I think they're gonna have a good plan. You know, they have some good people around, you know, to help with the, with the guys and stuff like that. Then, you know, one thing that's going to, that we want to do, you know, I might have to stick around, though, because they might, they're going to need that veteran pre presence, you know, to talk these guys down and, you know, give these guys a good example, show them what they should and shouldn't do. So it's going to be a tough, uh, it's going to be a tough adjustment, but, you know, I think it's, I think it's going to be a good thing for, um, uh, for, for, um, the players. Shoot, they're getting a 13% um, raise just going to Vegas with no state tax. Right. Shoot, that that's gonna put a little something to somebody's eyes, no matter what. Shoot, right. I know DC. He probably like shoot that all that money they take out of taxes for my contract. I'm getting all, I'm getting to live it back when we go to Vegas. You right, know? right. Um. So I I said you're you're 35 now. Man, I'm 28 for life. <laughs> you're 28 for life. <laughs> but no, before you're how how old are you? Yeah, I just turned 35. You just turned 35, ago. and this this season 2018 2019 is is your what 15th? I mean my 13th season. 13th season. They, like I said. You got a big contract in Tampa Bay. You get released. You know, every year. Last year, you had to hold out for money. This year, and I, listen, you got to build for the future. You can only go for so long. They draft, you know, these these star uh, uh, linemen. What is it going to, like, do you feel like like they're trying to get rid of you? The NFL is trying to get rid of you? Like, you're as far as beating the odds in football, I mean, it's rare that a lineman plays as long as, as you have. I mean, it's a blessing. It's luck. It's hard work. It's just never getting that terrible injury. Uh, uh, do you get resentful like when you have to hold out for money? Do you get resentful? I mean, I guess when they're drafting young dudes, that's that's smart because you you suffered an injury and they have to build for the future. But what is your take on like, do you sometimes like, yeah, why are you guys trying to get rid of me? I don't give up sacks. It's, it's tough because, you know, even in Tampa, I had to hold out to get a deal. Oakland had to hold out to get a deal. It's like I always got to fight for it. You know, I play my butt off and stuff. And, you know, a lot of these other guys, they don't even play as good as me, and they just get handed all this money. It's like I got to fight for mine. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, uh, I wish I I wish I wish could do it different. I wish I wish it, it, it didn't have to come to me holding out. You know what I mean? I wish I, it would just play out. But, you know, I use this as motivation, man. You know, I came in undrafted free agent. You know, I just started 170 straight games. You know, so it, it's going to be hard. Um, competition is what, what 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 drives me. So, um, you know, once I get back from this injury, I'm going to compete. Uh, you know, they got these young guys in. It's, no, it's not going to be no hard feelings because I love D.C. and I love the team. So, you know, I'm going to try to get those young guys right and take them under my wing And when I am done because I'm not going, I'm going, I'm not going out without a fight, you know. Right. So when I am done, I want to make sure, you know, this first-round pick, he, he gets all my tips, everything I got in my back pocket. I'm going to let him know everything, you know. So when he does get in there, you know, he could pr protect my guy, D.C., like I do because, you know, at the end of the day, me and D.C. always going to be friends, you know what I mean? And, and when I meet this guy this week coming up, you know, we're going we gonna to be good friends. You know, they told me they want me to take him under my wing, you know, teach him everything, and, and you know, I'm going to do it. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to compete my butt off. That's all I've been doing in this league. I always fought for everything. I competed my butt off for everything. And like I said, nothing was given to me. Right. So that's my mentality. You know, I, I fight, I fight, I fight, and then I, I'm, I'm, I'm going go, to go down swinging. Do you do so when you say compete? It's really just like to compete to show you're healthy. Compete to show you're still all pro level. It's not necessarily compete against him. It's really just at this point with you to like show that like you you come back from this foot injury and you still basically got it. Or basically, you still, you summed it up so right. You know, um, basically, I still got it. You know, you gotta understand. Um, you know, when I went. My whole career, every time I've been, like, I never had a solid backup because I don't miss any games. Like, and I think the Raiders kind of saw that last year when I went down. They're like, damn, 
You know, if, if something happens, we got to have some, something there, a plan for my $120 million guy, you know. Right. And, um, and we got to plan for the future. I'm not going to lie. When, um, you know, I'm the first one to tell you, when, uh, as, soon as, when as soon as I saw the draft pick, I called Gruden immediately. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? He didn't answer when I saw him the next Monday. He said, like, he, like, he was like, he was ready to kick my ass, huh? He was, like, he was joking with me. He's like, you was ready to kick my ass, huh? I was like, man, I was mad, but I said, I'm good now. You know, I, I'm an emotional dude. That's what makes me uh, such a good player because I play with emotion. You know what I mean? I, I feel like that's what has helped me out throughout the career. But I ain't going to lie, I called Gruden as soon as that. Do, 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 like, do. what the fuck are you guys yeah, doing? I, I called Dude, he didn't answer. And then when I saw him on Monday, he joking around with me. He was like, you just ready to kick my ass, huh, Donald? He was ready, he, he ready to calm your ass down. He said, you know what I mean? And explained everything to me and stuff. That's one thing I like about him, too. He keeps it real with you, man. He keeps it 100 with he you. He does. Man. You can't, you, you know, it's it's rare where you got a guy that, that does that. You know? Especially I, a head coach. Exactly. I know him for well. We joked around. You know, uh, I was in his office and we joked around about it. He, but he kept saying, he's like, he was like, Donald, you was mad in the motherfucker. You was ready to kick my ass. I was like, I kind of was, coach. I kind of was. He's like, yeah, that's why. He's like, that's why I ain't answer. That's why I ain't answer. That's but, funny. But, uh, you know, uh, now now talking to them and seeing um, t- them telling me the plan and seeing uh, what happened and stuff, you know, I'm good with it. I mean, I was good with it, you know, later on that day. But it, it, it was funny. I was watching the draft with my son, my nine-year-old, and he loves football. He always on NFL Network. And we were like, we're waiting on the draft. And he looked at me and said, Dad, you getting dad, they getting rid of you? I said, I said shit, son, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that's funny. But yeah, now I can I can sit back and laugh about it though. But I, at first when I saw, I was like, I was like, I like, I was like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, first round. I'm like, shit. I said, we gotta address right defense. Right off the top. I'm like, shit. we gotta address defense. Right, shit. that's like, funny. So so how how are you feeling? Uh, and what is it called? A Liz Frank injury? Who's that named after? Her? Like a skater? What is it called? Yo, I forgot. I forgot. The doctor explained it to me before he did my surgery where it, where it came from. But that was right when I was in. Um, I had the anesthesia. I was out right after, so I don't remember what he said. But it's it's, it's named after somebody. You're right. Um, I think it is a hockey player, skater, something like that. Okay. I think it is. Um, but yeah, I fractured uh, like four bones in my foot and tore my Liz Frank. Um, you, are you the first person getting an update on my injury, man? I'm I'm doing good, man. I'm doing everything they they want me to do. It's, it's just different. This is my first major injury I've had in my career. What a blessing, though, man. Yeah, for a exactly, lineman, exactly, exactly. That is and such a fucking bless. I mean, for a football player in general, but for a lineman, you guys always get those people falling under you. I mean, that's a fucking blessing. And I was mad too because I, I you know, I had a 170 um, straight start streak, and I just passed Joe Thomas because he. He got hurt earlier in the year, and I just passed him, and then I got hurt. I'm like, damn, you know, I had had the streak going, but you know, I'm doing everything they're telling me to do. Everything's going good. The the frustrating thing is, I've never been hurt, and I want to do so much more. And they keep telling me, you know, trust the process, trust the process. And I'm listening though. I'm, You're like, yo, I ain't Joel Embiid, man. Yeah, it's hard. I'm listening though, but it's like I want to do more. And they're like, man, just chill, just chill. We're gonna we want you for training camp. You know, during the season, we don't need you now. But it's like I'm used to being out there with the guys. You know. I'm in the back while they're, while they're practicing. I'm calling out my assignments and stuff. I, I'd rather be out there, but I'm listening. I'm, I'm not being hard-headed. I want to do a lot more right. than they're letting me, but I am listening because I know they know what's best. And, you know, at my age and everything, I want to come back strong. You know, I want to – I just want to win these last two years, man. I just have fun and win, man. You know, I, in Tampa, you know, it's up and down. When I first got to the Raiders, you know, one, one thing, I first thing I said when I – my first interview, I said, you know, I want to bring the Raiders back to greatness and, you know – I have, but the mission's not not done yet. It's not complete. Right. You know, Super Bowl's complete. You know, we got back to the playoffs. You know, I helped that. Uh, you know, Reggie McKenzie did a great job drafting these young guys, bringing these young guys in, and, and they've been jelly. You know, Khalil and D.C., that was a – man, that was a, a, a knockout hit. You know what I mean? I, um, them back-to-back, first and second round. And, you know, we we, we got to – we. We we are disappointed with how we played last year. Mm. And, you know, a Gruden coming in and – us being upset with how the season went last year, it's like everything's gelling and falling in place. But we still got a lot of work ahead of us. We still got a long way to go. Derek Carr. I mean, I, I love the way he plays. Uh, uh, you know, he he's tough. Uh, I love his story. You know, I'm a fan of his. $100 million. First of all, when he gets $100 million, are you like, when you guys are on the road, you're at dinner, like, don't look at me. Like, you pull that fucking credit card out. $100 million? He, he, you know, DC. He he take care of his guys, man. He take care. of I be messing with him all the time, DC. I said, uh, you saw what Matt Ryan just got. I said, when you get that second deal, I said just buy me a car. It could be used. I don't want nothing too big. Just just give me a little a little little Hellcat or something. You know what I mean? I, I always joke with him about that, and he always be laughing like DP, like DP, funny. <laughs> you know, like, I always joke with him about that, but 
you know, one thing about DC, he takes care of us, man. He takes care of his guys. You know, gets us great Christmas gifts every year. And uh, if we do go to dinner and he's there, he'll he'll take the bill. But you know, DC, he he studies so much. I mean, he's the first guy in, in the um in the um the facility. You know, he's one of the last guys to leave. You know, uh, so when we do go to dinner, sometimes he does miss a lot because he's like, "Hey, get to sleep." You know, I'm, uh. up, I'm up early in the morning. Like when we do do online dinners and stuff. Like uh, one time he he came he came just for the beginning for about thirty minutes and then just show face. Which you, you appreciate, right, that. Like, right, yeah, right? Thanks for coming. You know, what I mean, we understand. Then he had to go home. He's like, you know, I gotta get up early. You know, I gotta get in there, get in the, in the book. So, so one thing about DC, he study hard. He's a you know, man, um, he's a, he's a great guy. He's a great player. Like I got a lot of admiration for DC. Like like you know, what I mean, I, I talk highly about him because I really feel like you know he's gonna be one of those great quarterbacks that we're gonna be talking about from years to come. His injuries, you know, like last year he had injury. The year before, when you guys were cooking, when he goes down, uh, uh, like. Can you guys even re- recover from that? Like, it's so rare that, like, you know, what happened in Philly, like a guy comes in there, he's like, as good or playing, you know, sometimes even better. Like, Derek, uh, you know, the injuries have been such a burden. Um, h- how frustrating has that been? Like, even not uh, in 2006, 2017, like when he went down, when you guys were rocking and rolling, it, I mean, it definitely, like, it screwed everybody up. I mean, that one, that one always sticks in my head. I won't ever forget that one. Um, Oh, it was late in the season. I haven't gave a sack the whole season. I'm blocking my guy, and all of a sudden, my foot just slips from under me, and I fall, and he he gets sacked. And this first sack I give up all year, and, and it gets my quarterback out for the year. Like Was that the injury? Yeah, and it got my quarterback out for the wow. year. And, uh, you know, it's crazy. Same steps I take all the time. I've been killing this dude all game, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm turning and running. My foot just, took a, t- just stepped in the grass, and just boom, I fell right on my face. You know what I mean? I, I just fell right on my face. I didn't slipped, realize slipped that. out my my hand, and then DC told me he said he he wished he would just went down. He said he tried to fight out of it, and that's when it, he tried to get out of it when he grabbed his leg. He tried to Shit. yank out of it to keep going. He said I should just went down. And you know, I think uh, DC learned from that. You know, sometimes if you notice in the games, you know, what I mean, if he knows he's gonna get sacked and, and something breaking down, he'll he'll just he'll just go go down instead of trying to fight stuff. Like you know, what I mean, I think he learned from that. And then um, you know, the one the one um last year when he when he got his back, that was just crazy. It was off a of play action. You know, we're all running, um, you know, usually the ball's out quick and, you know, he came back and it, that was just a freak one. And, uh, he, he he went down too like he did, but the dude, you know, the lineman fell with yeah. his knee and knee hit him in the back. <sighs> it's just a um, freak injury. But but one thing about DC, you know, everybody like tried to, he, he's a tough son of a bitch. Of course. He's a tough motherfucker. Like, like they don't know that. I know that. He's a tough dude. Like, he's a tough, tough dude. It's just been unfortunate, man. Like you said, that year... The first year he got hurt, like we were rolling, we were rolling, we were rolling. Then I got hurt the next game, couldn't play in the playoffs. That was only my second time making the playoffs in my my twelve year career. Shit. So that was that was tough. And uh, but you know, I think they got a plan now. You know, they got a plan. You got to have a plan, just like they got a plan for 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 me. You know, bringing in these these young guys in case something happens. And I think that's why they're bringing in these young guys now too. So because they know we we got to protect DC, we got to keep them upright because when he's upright, he's doing his thing, and, and we're rolling, rocking and rolling. Um, Marshawn Lynch, beast mode. I mean, this is a personality. People probably ask you about him all the time. That's my boy, man. What, 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 what is he like? What's his fucking deal? Is he coming back? Like, I mean, he's like, everybody loves beast mode. Um, last year he had flashes of, you know, beast mode, but it was just a frustrating year across the board as a Raider fan. And I am a Raider fan. What is he like as a person? And what is it like blocking for him? And what is it like when he's, when he is cooking, you know, when he comes through the hole? He he he's straight East Oakland. He's straight hood. He, he's I as hood him. as it's the realest this ever gets, right? I've known him for a while, even before he got um, to the Raiders. I played with his cousin in um, Tampa, and we got real close. But you know, I love Beast Mode. I love his mentality. You know, um, you know, sometimes his mentality gets a little too much. Like, yeah, bro, you got to chill. But that's him, and he ain't gonna change for nobody. And that's one thing I love about him. Um, but like you said, he's been there every day, this off-season program. Okay. He's been working his butt off. He's been working harder than I thought. I was even messing with him. I was like, I, I call him my son. I was like, damn, son, you've been there every day. I said, daddy, proud of you. You know what I mean? I said, I sound proud of you. <laughs> and he'd be like, chill, son, chill, son. But uh, now nah, he's been there every day. He's been working hard. I was in the lunchroom Thursday leaving, and he was sitting down with his new fullback watching film going through – you know, tell him what he likes to read. What you know, I was like, damn. I said, you never did that last year. You know, I, I, we always fuck around, joke around. I said, you never did that last year. I said, man. I said, man. I said, my son growing up. You know what I mean? Like I said, my son growing up. <laughs> he, he like, don't talk to your daddy like that. You That's know, we, we go back and forth. But uh, 
but he's on. And you know what? We got um, you know, one of the big big hires that that guys are really sleeping on is is our O line took coach Tom Cable. You okay, know? why? Was, because he's 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 a great old line coach, you know. I, how, how do you like at this point? You like you, you know that, but explain what that means to to someone like me. Because offensive line, it's like we could sit here and be like, I played wide receiver, I played fucking two hand touch, I played flag football. Offensive line is it like you either played offensive line or, or you don't know anything about it. I don't give a fuck how much studying you do. Like you know, it's like you could play basketball your whole life. You could get an understanding for basketball. You could get an understanding for throwing football to your son. You, you could catch a offensive line is like you know. It's not like you go play. Oh, I'm gonna go play offensive line on a Sunday. Like you could play golf. You could play tennis. Offensive line is like this whole world to itself. So, what makes a good offensive lineman a uh, coach? Uh, finding out what your players are good at. <sighs> finding out what they can do good and. You know, put them in the right spot to succeed. Um, not trying to have them do stuff just because uh, this is the drill. You got to do it. You got to do it. Okay, he might not be too good at that. All right, well, we're going to do something else. You know what I mean? Listening, like, like you know, I might tell I might tell a coach, like, you know what? This is how, how I've been doing it. Like, is it all right if I do that? Some coaches be like, nah, you got to do it my way. Do it my way. You know, Coach Cable's like, you know what? If it works for you, you know, let, let, go ahead. Let's, let, let, let's do it, you know, and – um. Oh, go ahead. But like, give me the intricacies. Like, what would work for you? Like, like the way you set up. Like, because it's it, again, this is so foreign. Like, give me an example of something. Like, what is it? Yeah, you know, well, well, me, I've been playing so long. Like, when I'm in my pass, when I'm in my stands, I, my foot's back far. <laughs> you know, when he teaches some of the young guys, he got their foot up a little, a little bit closer. And I'm like, you know, I'm coach. I'm used to this. I've been doing this for twelve years. All right, I'm not. Even, he's like, I wasn't even thinking about telling you nothing different. You know, right? You, know, you go do you. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, like some guys, some guys aren't good pullers. You know, you got to pull, get out. Some guys aren't good pullers. All right, we're not gonna, we're not gonna run that pull play for you. We're gonna run it the other way, and we might have to mix it in once or three times to keep everybody honest. You know, stuff like that. You know what I mean? But on a one, two, three times, just, just do what you can and try to, try to make it work. You know what I mean? And then, um, you know, hand placement. Um, uh, I, I like, you know, I've been with a couple of different coaches, so you know, I, I've been taught different things. And then when he comes in, and teaches his way. You know, he's like, he's like, talk to me if you want to do something different or. Or if you want to do it, if you don't like the way I'm doing it, explain it to me. He said, I might not always agree with you, but I'm going to listen to it and try to try to um, take it in perspective, you know, and try to help you out with it. And, you know, uh, Coach Cable, when he was with Marshawn, man, I mean, they were they were running the ball fucking crazy in Seattle. You know what I mean? And and for him to come back and bring that run scheme here, I know Marshawn's fucking excited and happy to have him back. And, you know, the time being that I've been with him and been listening to him and watching him and 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 listening to the install of our run game, like it's it's gonna be fucking great, you know. So when I say like offensive line, uh, uh, stuff, like what does it mean to be a good offensive lineman? You know, being a good offensive lineman. You know, one thing. Well, well, I'm gonna get back to you. Like like you say, offensive lineman. We we do the dirty work. We get no credit. None. We get no credit. We do the dirty work, and and we're the engine. You know what I mean? Like DC the car. You know, the receivers, the rims, you know what I mean? The running back, the sound system, you know what I mean? But we the engine. You know, you can't work without the offensive line, you know what I mean? We the, we the engine that makes it go. But um, being a, a good offensive lineman is, you know, one thing about me and my career and why I think I made it so far is I'm consistent. Consistency, you know what I mean? They know I'm going to be there. I'm going to be on my guy. You know, I'm not perfect. I might slip up one or two times, but... Ninety percent, ninety five percent, ninety percent of the time, I'm gonna be on oh my guy. So it's consistency, and and you gotta sometimes, man. Sometimes you just gotta suck it up and say, I'm about to just beat this dude's ass. Sometimes technique go out out the window. You just gotta fucking just grunt your teeth and just fucking fight and say, I, I'm 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 gonna get the best of this motherfucker. Cause like when I'm going against Von fucking Miller and it's third and fucking long and he's sitting there staring at the fucking uh, ball, eyes big as shit. I'm thinking like fuck. I got I, I got to keep this motherfucker off, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes. You know what I mean, my technique might not be perfect, but I'm gonna get my hands on him and take him off. And he's he's one of the great. Von's one of the great, but I don't. You know, I, I, it's, it's hard to eat breakfast that morning when I know I gotta play Von. You know what I mean? Stomach a little bubbly and stuff. You know what I mean? I'm like, golly, I gotta play Von all fucking game. Like shit. You know what I mean? Because he good. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's I'm gonna compete. I'm a competitor. You know what I mean? That's. That's why I take pride in. I take pride in going against the best and and, and shutting them down. That's how you, that's how you get your name out as offensive lineman. You go against the best, and and when they look at the stat sheet, like, oh shit, was he there that day? You know right. What I mean? like, no like, touch. No like, no you know, no you know no know no I mean? sacks. No like, tackles. That's how I got growing like growing, growing up in Tampa. You know, I was going against John Abraham. He's one of the most one of the best defense ends that I think that doesn't get talked about. I agree. In my conference, I had John Abraham, Julius Peppers. 
I mean, one time Julius Pepper put his arm out on me. I tried to stop a boy. His arm was so long, I, I, I caught him right here. By his elbow, I'm like, he's a fucking freak. A fucking freak, man. You know, one of the best. And you know, I had Will, Will Smith, rest in peace. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, and and those those games, you know, we, we playing on Monday Night Football stuff like that. I'm like, man, I'm about to I'm about to show the world what the fuck I got. You know what I mean? They they keep talking about him. I'm gonna show him what I got. This young kid, you know what I mean? On the time, this young kid going against them, and and that's how you you get yourself out there. That's how you get your name going on when you play against the best. You got to be the best. You know what I mean? When you're coming off the line, like I mean. When I'm looking at you and I think about these offensive linemen who get no credit and, you know, you'll hear about, oh, this, this, like, you know, they'll talk about a guy, oh, this guy runs the the, the 40 and 40, you're like, this fucking guy is like the size of a fucking truck, fat fucking, you know, guy, like, you guys are, talk about freaks, because the, the, the linebackers, we know those guys are like, they're like, you know, crazy fast, the Vaughn Millers and all that, you guys are you have to like the quickness and, and the agility and you're the biggest guys, you know, like especially like the guards in the center. You know the deal. You know what the crazy thing is now? Like these new kids come in freaks. Like like these these DNs, they're running as fast. These DNs run as fast as receivers now. Have you seen the evolution of man since you're... Oh, you're- it's crazy. I'm, I, I, like when I do my campus stuff, I get these high school kids coming. I'm like, golly, I was not that fucking big in high school. What the fuck are y'all eating? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's some big kids. I went to my college a couple of months ago, and I sat down with the old line. I'm like, man, y'all, I wasn't that big in college. Like, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What, what are they feeding? They're bigger than you, right? Yeah, in college already and stuff like that. In high school, I'm like, god damn, but... um. But like you said, like like um, you know, I, I know somebody on my team. I ain't gonna call him out. I ain't gonna say his name though. But he got one of the worst bodies ever, bro. But he's some. He's one of the most athletic motherfuckers. Well, who ever. is he? I mean, I, I you just you're giving him a great dude. compliment. I can't do that to my dude. But okay. he, he, he 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 can move a bend, and you'll look at him and be like. <laughs> But when he gets out there in space and plays, man, he's one of the best at the, in the game at what he does too. And, and he got probably one of the worst bodies ever, though. But he's one of the best. He's just that's just he, that's just know? the way he is. It's just sometimes you build. Like they look at me sometimes. They be like, that mother- I, I take my shot. And, man, I'm motherfucking you no know, football player. But when I get out there, shit, I, I'm looking like a sweet feet athlete. You know what I mean? Like 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 you know what I'm saying? Like it's just, it's stuff. It's you guys just, are freaks. Yeah, you know, like the offensive linemen are like we talk about the Antonio Browns and the Odell's. Like you guys are fucking freaks. Yeah, you know, I got Gabe Jackson, my right guard. He's he's fucking strong as shit. Like he's from Mississippi. He's just a a, a big strong ox. You know, I got Ko next to me, and he's just a big strong ox, man. And, and we gel together. We have fun together. Uh, we talk shit to each other all the damn time. You got to have thick skin to be in our room. Um, you know, I uh, looking forward to this first round rookie coming because he's gonna have a lot of money. So I can't wait for that old line, that uh, that rookie dinner, and uh, you know, ma- make him bring them snacks in, make him get his food on the on the road trips and stuff like that. But you know, old line, it, it's not easy. I'm not gonna say it's easy. You know, and the way the way the world is now, man, it's like everybody just training their kids to be football players or be this. Like with my kid, I'm like, man, go go have fun. Go play what you want to play. Right. We'll decide that shit when you get older, man. Right. Like, get in baseball. I'm gonna get you in baseball, I'm gonna get you in football, I'm gonna get you in basketball. We'll decide I'm not gonna predetermine nothing, man. Like, right. Like just go. Cause I like I was growing, I thought I was gonna be in the NBA. I wanted to be in the NBA. You know, right. growing up and look what happened. I'm twelve years in playing football. So, you know, like you look at some of these kids like I, and some kids come to camp, I'm like, bro, like I wanna be one to tell the parents, like, like, bro, let them chill. Like you got them in football year round. You know what I mean? Like let them let them chill. You know what I mean? I feel like you know, some of them guys that do get older and get a lot of injuries, it's because they got wore down as a kid. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like you got to be able to just to play and have some fun sometime, man. Like, I ain't train, train, train. Let them be a kid. Right. I agree. I agree. Um, you mentioned Vaughn Miller. You mentioned some names. Who? What are the other linebackers, other defensive ends throughout your career that you're just like, I, I need to get some sleep uh, uh, and I need to get in the film room uh, that you've played against that are just like – are just good at their craft. Oh yeah, that's one other thing too. Be a good offensive lineman. You got to study. Your, you got to study film. I, I watch film a lot. And, and what are you watching for? I'm. I don't. I don't watch too much of the run game because I feel like the run game. You just got to be better than the other man. You just got to one and more. You just got to beat them. But like when I'm going against those good DNs, I, I watch they pass. I watch they pass rush moves all the time. You're so watching can, the guy you're going against. Yeah, so I can anticipate. And, and but what, are you looking for like how he comes off? Like what side he favors? Like what are you looking for? Yeah, I'm looking for his moves. If he's a if he's a bull rush guy, if he's a one arm guy, if he's 
if he has a spin, because you always got to be ready for the spin. Like Vaughn got one of the sickest spins ever. You know right. I mean? You always got to be ready for the spin. So I, I, I know if I'm going against Vaughn, I can't ever lean too much because if he hits me with that spin, I'm lean, I'm done, you know? So it's, it's, it's little stuff like that. Um, um, how they come off? Are they just up a field rusher? Or, or do they take the inside if you give it to them? So I always be ready. Okay, if they get the inside more, I got to jump it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I try to watch, you know, some of the schemes too because, you know, if I see, okay, if I see this guy come down here, Oh, I know he's going to go inside. You know what I mean? So I'll be ready. I'll, I'll react faster. You know what I mean? If I see that linebacker come over here, oh, that's that blitz they're about to run. You know, I can anticipate stuff better. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah, but but some of them DNs, like like you said, like, man, when I first got in the league, John Abraham was giving me the blues, man. Like, when I first, man, when I first got in the league uh, with Tampa, I was like, I think my first four times playing with him, he got a second each game. You know what I mean? After that, like, I just started, I just started fighting. I started fighting. I started learning them. I started doing you know peppers was a beast when i first got in my first start in the nfl was against the white freeney oh uh. in indianapolis that was my first start of my career and i mean and that dude was that dude in his prime was was a man and, and he I, was fast too right yeah oh man he fast had the spin had the bull rush he had everything he, he'll set the spin up off the bull rush so you be trying to sit on the bull rush and he'll spin but you know that was an eye opener that was a, a great learning learning thing on um, that game and then um uh, you know, another dude that people sleep on, uh, you know, DeMarcus Ware. You know, I, I played him in college twice and played him. I played probably, I don't know how many times in the league. But that's my, that's a, he a good boy, right? He's one of my good friends, Uh, but but he's a beast. You know yeah. what I mean? He's a beast. And then, you know, in my conference right now, ain't too many left tackles sign up to come to AFC West. Yeah. You know, because every Sunday you got to you gotta play Vaughn twice a year. You got to play Justin Houston twice a year. You know what I mean? You got to play um, Melvin Ingram. And a lot of people sleep, man. Joey Bosa, he nice, man. A lot of people sleep on him. He he nice, man. Joey Bosa got a lot of moves, man. You, you know, so it ain't like left tackles running to the AFC West. You got to have a certain mindset, a certain mentality to be able to uh, to play in our conference. I love it. I love this shit. I love this shit. My man Crabtree, Michael fucking Crabtree, and and I and I met him, and I was like, because I, I I fuck with Crabtree. Why does he drive every cornerback deep? Why does every defensive player in the NFL seem to hate my man Michael Crabtree? Are they mad because he's he's like a pretty boy? He got his chain set. What happened that game that got out of hand? And like, what, just the first question is, why is everyone hating on my man Crabtree? Man, I don't know, man. Crab, my boy, man. Crab I fuck good. with Crabtree. Crab, a good dude, man. And he's he really, a good, he good really player. Good Crab funny as hell too, man. If y'all you sit down and talk with Crab, he's funny as hell. He's a good dude. And you know the bad thing is, I hate seeing it because. Aqib Tlaib was one of my best friends, one of my good friends, man. Our families are like this. You know, we play in Tampa together. And, like, seeing that, it's just it's just crazy. I'd be like, man, why don't, why don't y'all, y'all, y'all need to just squash this. I mean, I, they've been competing since high school. They went to rival high schools in Dallas. And stuff. I didn't they've know that. They've been competing since high school, you know what I mean? So Did it, they never goes, say that? Yeah, so it goes back. They, they're both from the same city and stuff like that. But, you know, it, it's sad. It hurts me because I'm like, man, y'all both my boys. But I, I, I try to, you know, keep it calm between, between both of them, you know what I mean? But... You know, you know, crap, crap. He a great receiver, man. You know, I'm sad to see him go. To be honest with you, man. I agree. Like, I, was, I was sad to see him go, man. He gonna he gonna bounce back um, in Baltimore, man, because he got a great quarterback with Flacco and stuff. And, and he and, finds the ball. The ball finds him, and, and he, he got finds some of the a best touchdown. Hand, he got some of the best hands in the NFL, man. Um, I'm gonna miss Crab though, but man, I, I got a lot, a lot of love for Crab. But but I I don't know, man. I think people always try to try Crab, but you know what? One thing about Crab though, um, he talk he talk with his play. I agree. He talked with his play. I agree because that was some. I mean, and la, and that I kind of, I kind of, man, that that shit was kind of brewing over. I was like, man, that game. You knew it was going to happen. Key before the game, I'm like, keep. I'm like, just, I'm like, just chill, bro. Chill. He's not and then, chilling. And then you know, and then you know, I already knew. I could see in crab eyes in the huddle. I'm like, oh fuck. I'm like, oh shit. They about, <laughs> early in the game. I'm like, damn. They about. I'm like, that shit got bad for a it second. Was it was bad. It was bad. For a second, I mean, but, it, it, there's nothing dope about it. I mean, you you're a vet. Football fights to me are the dumbest thing ever because I, I get the emotion and the violence and, and the adrenaline. I get that. But it's like you got helmets on, you got pads on. There's really nowhere to hit. Like, do you get any shit? Like, when was the last time anybody grabbed your – did anybody grab your mask? I, Man, I, got a, I got a fight with Jared Allen a couple of years ago on Thursday Night Football. Um He's a know, fucking character too, right? Yeah, I, mean, I got a lot of respect for Jared, though. He's he a good player, though, but – um you know, Jerry rubbed me the wrong way early in my career. And, uh, you know, I was always battling, battling. And, uh, you know, that game, I remember one time while we were playing in Tampa and I was talking shit to him because we won. And that motherfucker hit me where it hurt. He said, he said, don't talk to me until you make it across the water. I'm like, fuck. You're right. Like, make it to Hawaii Pro. But I'm like, damn, that motherfucker just shut me up, put me in my place. You know what I mean? And then uh, I made the Pro Bowl like two years later. So when we played him again, I said, motherfucker, I made the Pro Bowl. 
Now what? And I mean, I made it across that motherfucking water. Ooh, ooh, but we had a game. We were battling, battling, battling. And you know, uh, you know, he uh, he got mad when you know, I tried to. I tried to. You know what? I, you know me. I'm a physical dude. You know, if I can get you, I'm gonna try to finish you. So I try to finish you. And he tried. To, he tried to grab me. You know, I knocked his helmet off. We started. I felt like a little ass kid though, because he's holding my face mask, <laughs> and I'm like this swinging, <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't see nothing. And I'm swinging at uh, you know, it was crazy too because. We were winning. It was Thursday night football, and I mean that stadium got so fucking loud. Cause the next play, they ran a fucking stunt, and my guard didn't come off inside, and he got a fucking sack. The very next play, that stadium got so fucking loud. He did this little thing. We ended up still winning though. But I was like, I'm looking at my guard. I'm like, man, motherfucker, why did you? I knocked you off. Why did you go in there and get him? He, and my, that was the last game of my guard's career season too. Because he had a foot injury. He's like, I mean, I couldn't plan off that oh, foot. Oh, shit. I, you know, he's playing through. He said, I couldn't plan off that foot to go back. So it's kind of like, but in my head, I'm like, man, fuck. Like, Because hey, you didn't want to get it, let yeah, him get I didn't want him to get shit that game. You know what I mean? But 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 that's another dude that that's a fucking, that was a fucking baller, man. Like, I had to, I had to, fuck, I had to bring my lunch pill that, that game. Man. With every who? time, Jared, every time I played Jared, I had to bring my lunch pill. I had to watch a lot of film on him. You know, that's what I said. You know, that's old, old, old news and stuff. I got a tremendous respect for him. You know what I mean? That's one thing I do, man. Uh, that's one thing about me. I don't fear nobody, but I respect a lot of motherfuckers. Right. Um, you seem like you talk shit. A lot. <laughs> I'm gonna die down my older age now. Because you gotta keep your win, right? Yeah, I, gotta keep, I gotta keep my win, keep going. You know, I'll be like, I'll be watching now, like, damn, that motherfucker's getting into it. I like, that used to be me. But one thing I don't do, bro, if you ever see me, like, one thing I don't do, bro, you don't fuck with my quarterback. In terms of what? Extra Hitting shit. Play anything, you don't fuck with my quarterback. I'll get on your ass quick. I don't, I don't play that shit. Like, that's one thing I don't play. And I don't play with most of my teammates, man. I ain't I always do no cheap shit to my teammates. I'm going to be on your shit. Right. You know what I mean? I remember one time some dude pushed DC out the out the fucking, um, out of bounds late. And I'm on the other side of the field. I walked all the way up to that motherfucker. They had to get me back to the huddle because the time was running. I walked all the way up to that motherfucker, pushed the shit out. I'm like, don't hit that motherfucker late. Don't fuck with my dude. Like, right. That's my quarterback. Like, I, 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 I protect DC. That's my dog. Like, even if it wasn't my dog, any of my quarterbacks, they always tell you, like, like DP always got my motherfucking back. I don't let, I don't let shit slide. Who, who, who are the players that uh, throughout your career uh, that talk? You said Jared talks shit. You know, you could tell his personality. He seemed like he talked shit all the way through. Who are the other players that you've played against uh, uh, that we or or even on, on your team that just the big shit talkers? Because you know, I'm the king of talking shit. <laughs> I know, I but know. but I mean, you guys are really doing it. So who are the guys that like you know like are loud talking shit? Uh, Fletcher Cox. From uh, from Philly, he talk a lot of shit. I ain't played him that much, but but when I do play, I'm motherfucker always talking. Uh, um, what's his name from Denver? One of the linebackers from Denver. I don't remember his name. One of the linebackers from Denver. He be talking a lot of shit. I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. Like, make a play first before you start talking shit. You know what I mean? Um, me. Uh-huh. Uh, shit on my team, man. On my team now, like on my team now, like our old line, like we don't start shit. But if you start some shit with us, we gonna fucking finish it. That's one thing I like about us. We got one of the best old lines in the NFL. And we ain't gonna start shit, but we'll finish it if you try to start some shit. And some people they try to start some shit, then at the end of the game, they'll be fucking quiet. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, like you need to chill the fuck out. But um, you know who I used to love? I I ain't even growing up, like, but he was always on offense. Man, motherfucker Steve Smith he talked so much shit. He did, right? And he was on offense, but I I love watching him play on the side. Like, that motherfucker's a fool. He talked so much shit. Uh and he's my a boy, little dude. My boy, my boy, Marcus Peters, he be talking a little shit too, man. Like, like they gonna be tough, the Rams, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? They improved. Yeah. Uh, uh, TJ Ward talk a lot of shit. Okay. That's my boy too. He okay. talk a lot of shit too. TJ Ward talk a lot of shit. Um, Key be talking shit a little bit. He, I think he like me, he done calmed down since he's getting older. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, shit. He didn't calm down last year. He was fucking all in. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Um, and on, on our team, you know, one thing about, one thing about Marshawn, he don't talk, he don't say shit during the game. Right, he seems like he, he doesn't say shit there after I'll be the game. When I be trying to jump on him when he's scoring shit, he be want to just shake my hand. I'll, I'll be like, because he hate when I do that. I be trying to grab him, and, and he hate that shit. So I be doing it on purpose. But look, Marshawn, Marshawn to see Marshawn get smacked by somebody, <laughs> and on the ground, I'm laying down next to him on the ground. He like good motherfucking hit hitting dude on the head. I'm like that motherfucker just smacked the shit out of you. He like good motherfucking hit hitting dude on the head. He gets like, hyped up about it. Yeah, like 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 you know what I mean. Then when he runs somebody over, he'll get hyped. But but if somebody hit him hard, he'll tell you like like good shit. Way to bring that shit. It's about time. You know what I mean? Like, like I'll be like that's the only time he really talked though. He don't he don't talk a lot of shit. But he he, he come to play. That's one thing I, I like about him. He he 
he come to play, bro. I'll be like, like, well, like last year, like watching him. Like sometimes I had to like, fuck, I'm watching. Let me keep blocking. Uh, like I'm watching, like shit. I'm watching him. Like, you know what right. I mean? I'm watching him right through. Let me keep blocking, get somebody down. Feel right. like I caught myself watching sometimes. Like, damn, this motherfucker is a beast. You know, I always always wanted to play with him, man. And then finally play with him last year. I'm like, God, I, I, I said, let me keep blocking. I, I, I end up watching sometimes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, damn, this motherfucker's running through everybody. He's really like you could see his aggressive, like you as a lineman, you could tell the difference, like when he Oh yeah. Yeah, compared to some other people. Like he the, 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 his feet never stopped moving. Mm. Like, like it's crazy. Like, you know, I'm the same thing. I'd have been running. Thinking he down and I gotta speed back up like oh shit he's still going like you know what I mean like like uh, he, he's he's special he's special I love that um tell me a huddle who's doing the talking besides your quarterback Derek Carr like like well, what is it like again this is like we could sit here and talk about I study this and I watch this and fucking analysts and experts and all these fucking stats and all this shit of an NFL huddle what 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 is going on in there like it's third and three. You know, you're in uh, in Minnesota. It's loud as shit. Like, wh- what is that like in there? It's a lot of it's a lot of deep breathing going on. <laughs> it's a lot of deep breathing, especially when the line. I remember um, when I used to play next to Gabe before they moved in right guard. I used to have to face the other way because his when I was in hell, I was in hell in his breath. So I used to have to face the other way so I could actually catch my fucking breath, like because he was breathing so hard. And I'm like, I'm like, damn, I'm like, I gotta. Get some real fresh air, you know, at the turn. But um, you know, in our huddle, DC, D, you know, one thing about our team, man, like I'm the I'm the oldest guy on the team now since Seabass left, and DC and Khalil's are captains. They are leaders, you know what I mean? And for them to be so young and uh, be so mature at such a young age, it's like, damn, I sit back, I sit back, I just worry more about me, you know what I mean? I, like I'm like, they got it, you know what I mean? But in our huddle, you know, DC's probably doing most, he's doing most of the talking. And then um, you know, our center rod, you know, no, he'll do some talking because you know he got to make sure. He's the one that puts us in the right spot, and him and DC always got to be on the same page. So he might do something like, if stuff ain't going right, you know, I might come up like, come on, guys, we got to make a play here. Like, come on, guys, let's get it, man. Like, or, or I'll be like, you know, I look at the sticks, hey, third and three, make sure I get to the sticks, third and three. And like, you know, sometime in two minutes, I'll remind the guys, like, hey, make sure you get out of bounds, you know what I mean? Make sure you get out of bounds. Uh, and then, like, you know, sometimes, you know, when we're going forward, I mean, I tell the running backs, you know, make sure you hold, make sure you hold on to the rock two hands. I'll be like, O line, make sure we, we come going, clean it up, because you know they're gonna try to strip the ball. You know what I mean? On four minute stuff, like little reminders. I might, I might do some stuff like that. But usually, you know, it's just DC and maybe Rod telling us like we might be talking about protection coming up, or you know, you know, with with our offense, it's so much shit in our offense. Like sometimes you might need. The, you might forget something and be like, hey, hey, what's that again? Okay, you know, you got the other guys well, that's you have remind to remind you. Yeah, this other guy, like, what's that again? Like, because there's so much shit and you're thinking about so much other stuff. So it might be like, like, I remember one time we, we was in the game, they, they, they called a, uh, you know, we called it, we uh, changed the play. And I looked at my dude and I said, I said, I said, I said what the fuck he called? <laughs> like, you know, you had to tell me, I forgot I had a brain, right. I had a brain fart, you know what I mean? Right, I right. I'm like, what the fuck he called? Oh, okay, I got it, I got you it. You have now. to be like, oh, Highly, like, a, like the listening is so much a part but of the it. toughest thing is when we play away, man. Them stadiums be so loud sometimes. What's man. the loudest ones? Like, give me the three loudest places. Kansas City's louder than a bitch. New Orleans Dome is loud. Um, Minnesota was loud as fuck. Um, Kansas City get louder than a motherfucker. Mm. Like, like, no, Seattle. Seattle's the loudest. I remember one time. Can bro, you hear the quarterback remember, at the line? I, no, I remember one time. Seattle, I ain't, I ain't hear DC voice to the second quarter. I swear, I hear DC voice. So how are you getting the snap or, or the I'm audible? I'm looking at the ball. Are we going off a of silent? Like, like I got a thing. Like, I'm not gonna say it though. But like, if you on know that one, I look one one thousand. I go. Cause you can't hear shit. Yeah, we go off like you know head movements. Uh, we got certain little things. You know what I mean? Like, like cause you know when it's loud, the, the guard looks back, and when he sees DC lift his head, he taps the center, and then whatever he does, I try to go off of that because you gotta understand. A, a split second late, I'm getting beat. Mm. You know, them, them, them DNs, they looking at the ball. They, they, they're flying off. You know what I mean? So I gotta be on point. So like when, when we're playing a loud, loud stadium, sometimes right, Rod get mad sometimes. But we'll be sitting in the back when we're not up. I'll be like, Rod, just do the, just do the movement for me, and I, I do it just to give him the time. Just do the movement for me, and he'll just stand there and do it. You know, just, just I got because if I, don't, if I go in the game not feeling comfortable with the, with the, with the silent snap count, it's gonna be a fucking problem. I gotta go in the game comfortable. Right. You know what I mean? So even before the game sometimes, we'll be on the sideline while they, before they do a national anthem. Rod, just give it to me a couple more times. Okay. All right. All right I got it. I got it. To I, get ready. I mean? Yeah, because you know that like that's why they that's why they get so loud. You know what I mean? Because they try to that's that's like um, they want you worrying. They exactly, want you exactly. They want you going off late. But yeah, I remember 
When we played Seattle once, I, I didn't hear DC's voice. Honestly, did not hear DC's voice until the second quarter. That's crazy. Yeah, it was, it was it was just so loud. They were so loud. Like you know, we started we started moving the ball a little bit, so it calmed down a little bit. But when they were up and rocking, like I didn't hear his voice the whole first quarter. Um, last season, I think it was last season. Uh, it's something that made outside of football, and I loved it. You you were in Oakland, and and you're getting heckled by. You had the role. By the way, did you come in the roles today? No, I came in the uh, the four by four G wagon. Oh shit! I wanted you to come up in the roles. You were leaving the stadium. What happened with the fan? Like, were you walk us through? What was the guy saying? I was uh, well. I was driving. I was driving through, and you know, it's usually never for some reason it was stop right there. It's usually always just smooth out. For some reason, it stopped. And you're in Oakland. Yeah, and I'm I'm texting while I'm stopped. I'm looking at my phone. You know, I got hella messages. I'm looking at my phone, and I see some fly across my my windshield. So I look okay. out, and I don't know if he threw it or not. But I look out, and I see a motherfucker like this. I said, like he throw something at me. I don't know if he threw it or not. Though I just saw some car. So I hopped out the car and I went over there. And then at he was the like, rolls. Yeah, and then he was like. He, he he kept saying twenty one mil, twenty one mil, twenty one mil. You ain't worth it. I was like, I was like, bro. I, I start I start cussing him out, and I'm like, what the fuck is you doing? Like like, are you fucking serious? I was like, I was like, I would really beat your fucking ass, like for real. And then I started looking around, and this boy was videotaping, and I saw some other people videotaping, I, and I honestly said this in my head. I promise, you, I said this to myself. I said, no, what the fuck are you doing? Get your ass back in this fucking car. I said, you doing what they fucking want? I was like, and I turned around, I got back in the car. Like, if you see the video, you can see me look, and I paused. And I was like, I was like, what the fuck is you doing, Donald? Get your ass back in the fucking car. You know what I mean? So I went back and got back. Man, if I could go go back and do it all, all over again, man, I would never got out the car. I would just let it slide. I was pissed because we lost that close game in San Diego that we should have won. And then I saw some fly across my car. I don't even know if it was a dude that if it was him that threw it. But that's but some rude when shit. Look, when I look out there, I see him with his hands up like this, talking, you know, pointing shit. So I don't know, man, you think it was him though. But you know, you live and you learn. That's that's one lesson I'm gonna learn from, you know, going forward, you know. I, I just let shit slide a lot, a lot. You know, you got people uh, on social media that you know you got these social media thugs and shit like that, and then, then oh, talk, I know, I talk know, shit, and then when you see them, they'll ask for an autograph or a picture, you know. But um, you know, I just learned to you know just block them and uh, you know just keep it keep it going, you know. Shit, I'm an old lineman. I block for a living, so I block your ass on social media quick. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, oh. so. The, the fans, of Raider Nation fans, I love them. They're so oh, passionate. But like, we got some of the greatest fans ever, man. Like, like when I was in Tampa, I, I rarely in LA, you know, had people come up to me. Tampa a lot, but now Raider fans, like all the time. I'm in a grocery store. I'm in just running the liquor store real fast. Uh, it's it's everywhere, you know. what I mean, it's like it's. Like I was out last night, and you know, I saw a gang of Raider fans. Like it's just Raider fans are everywhere. I'll be in Mexico on vacation. And Raider fans come up to me, you know. what I mean, it's like it's like the the nation following this is is really ridiculous. But it's a good thing. I love it though, and I mean, like I, every time I fly back and forth, I'm on the plane. Somebody, you know, what I mean, they they come up to me, want a picture and stuff like that. You know, it, it gets old, it gets tiring sometimes, but. I love it though, you know, especially because we got we got great support, man. We got great fan base, you know what I mean? Like sometimes while I'm at Disneyland or I'm at the fair with my kids, you know, sometimes I might be like, you know, just let me chill and join my family that time. But usually I'm always open for it and and and, and do it though. But but you ain't you ain't lying. We got some of the best fans in the fucking world. Um, before I let you go, two more things because I want to talk about your camp last. Somebody tried to break into your house. What yeah. is the story? Yeah, <laughs> it was a couple years ago. Uh, this uh. You know, my wife was pregnant uh, with my son, and uh, you know, I was in the bathroom. I'm getting ready to take him to school. I'm in my bathroom. Like I got, I'm blessed to have a, a nice size house. You know, this is man? in the morning. Yeah, it's in the morning, eight, eight, eight o'clock in the morning. I'm in a, I'm in the bathroom, and my like back, back. My bathroom's like in the back, and I'm brushing my teeth and stuff, and I hear like somebody screaming. But I'm thinking my son ain't listening. My wife screaming at my son, so I start walking towards the, down the closet hallway. A little slow, you know, I'm still brushing my teeth. And then my son busts through the door. Daddy, somebody broke in the house. So I start running. I'm in boxers. Just boxers. I start running. And I see my wife running up the stairs. No, she was praying with my daughter, running up the stairs with my Shit. other son. My other son in his in, in her hands. And she like, she like, somebody's broken in. My front doors are wide the fuck open. So I sprint down. I sprint down the stairs. And she's like, babe, grab your gun. I'm like, fuck. So I run. You know, I got a lockbox on my nightstand. I run, blah, blah, blah. I grab my gun. And I'm running downstairs. She's like, no, he, he, he's towards the, he's still in the house. Jesus Christ. So I come around where my garage is. And he's walking 
with his hands in his pocket, slow as shit, like he's in his own fucking house. So I um I put a gun out on him. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, you in my bottom fucking house. Like, what the fuck are you doing? No facial expression, nothing. He's still just... And then when I put a gun out, he kind of put his hands up, like, boom. So then he tried to make a move to run, so I shot at the wall. Holy shit. Man, I shot at the wall, and then he froze and ducked. And I went, I beat that motherfucker's ass. I tried to... uh. <laughs> I tried to kick him. I had no shoes. I tried to kick him, and I slipped and fell. And then he hopped up and ran through the garage. So I tried to run through the garage. He's holding the door shut, and I hear the garage open. So I run around through my front door. He runs across, hops the gate, and he's running across the street. I'm running outside. I'm in boxers, big black doing boxers with a gun in my hand. I'm running across the street. He runs across the street. And tries to go into the house across the street. So I grab Damn. him and I yank him to the floor from the thing. And I, I, I get on top of him. I'm just mauling bow, bow, bow. And then the dude comes out. He's like, hey, hey, what you doing? I hopped out, I pulled a gun on him. I'm like, who the fuck is you? Like, who, who? Come to find out. it was Holy uh, fuck. Come to find out. He's like, that's my son. I'm like, your son just broke in my fucking house. Are you fucking serious? He was like, and you, you could see his dad's face. He, he was like, it was so much disgust on his face. He was like, and he looked at his son. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? So by that time, I put my gun. The dude from across the street. Yeah. Um. He's like, he's like, he's his dad starts apologize. He's like, he's like, my son's mentally ill. He's been off his meds for about six months, man. He's like, he's mentally ill. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So by this time, my neighbors are calling out. My wife's freaking out because she heard a gunshot. She don't know what happened. Damn. Well, we, she got a, we got a plan. I ain't going to say what I'm playing, though, but she knows what to do and how to get out the house, you know, if anything like that happens. And she did that. And she was at my neighbor's house, and uh, she called the police. Um, and I, I told them, I, I stood there. I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm not I'm not leaving. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, this. I'm like, call, I told me his dad called the cops, too. I'm like, call the fucking cops. I ain't have no phone. I'm in boxers and shit. So then, you know, the police came, and, and you know me, I'm a big black dude. So once I heard the sirens, uh, my neighbor came. I said, make sure this motherfucker don't leave. So I went. It was trash day. So I went and I put my gun in between the tracks. I wasn't about to walk up to the police and boxers, big black dude with, with braids with a gun in my hand. You know what I mean? You know, you know, I'm the story. So I put my gun in between the, in the, uh, in between the um, trash can and I walked up. You know, as soon as I got a cop, pulled a gun on me. Like, like I said, nah, it ain't me. I said, this motherfucker over here. And then as soon as I said that, they were cool. They they rushed over there, pulled off the handcuffs, and then the first thing they asked, me, "Where's the gun? Where's the gun?" I said, "I knew he was gonna ask me that." I said, "It's right over there in between the trash can." <laughs> Damn. I said, That's why I did not come up with it, but um. Fuck, you know, I, I, that's a crazy fucking story. Yeah, it was a dude across the street. And come to find out, man, he, uh, like a couple of weeks later, because, you know, he's mentally ill, so they couldn't hold him. They they took him to the, uh, to you know, the mental place, and they released him in 48 hours. You know, he got that rule. So I, I got a restraining order on him and everything, and then uh, come to find out, like a month later, the police called my, come by my house. And they're like, uh, we just coming over here because dude called his mom and said he's on his way to my house to get my get his Ferrari. Kind of find out he was obsessed with my Ferrari. That's why he was going towards the garage. And he's talking about he coming to get his Ferrari. So the police stayed at my house for probably about for probably about eight o'clock to about one because they would be actually charged him this time because it's premeditated. So they but he never showed up. You know what I mean? They had unmarked cars on, on the other street waiting on him and he never showed up. But that's been smooth ever since. You know what I mean? Um we're Damn. in the process of moving right now though. I'm I'm, I'm trying to get in the gated community, but but yeah, that, that was that was a crazy ass fucking uh That's fucking nuts. Thing. Yeah, that was it was crazy, you know what I mean? And uh you know they took that was one of my favorite guns. They took that shit, man. They wouldn't still get it back to me, man. I had All a big right. ass hole in the fucking I had to get the wall patched out. I had a big ass fucking hole in the shit. That's crazy, man. Was it when you I, I mean, when you fired your gun in your house, how loud was that shit? It was loud as fuck. Like my wife said when she was running, like she got scared. She didn't I'm know what sure. Happened, you know what I mean? She didn't know if it was me, him. And like there's kids and she's pregnant. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. So like when she came out, she came out crying and stuff. Hell like, uh, yeah. Consoler and shit. But yeah, it was uh yeah, it was some crazy shit. It's something I don't I don't wish that on nobody, man. I, like my I, heart was beating and shit like that. And you know what I mean? And it was crazy. I had the the gun was called a judge. It shoots shotgun shells and, and, and fifty cal. And when I when I load, I put one out every other one. And I just spin it and close it. And the cop was like, you lucky it wasn't a shotgun shell because, you know, it would spread. He was like, you would have hit him. I mean, I'm glad it was a, it was, it was, it was a bullet. It was a 50 cal, but you know, he was like, you lucky it wasn't a shotgun shell because it would have spread. You would you would hit him. Right. Uh, you know, I don't want to kill nobody. Right. Like, and in, in hindsight, you, you think. You know how they say, I ain't a killer, but don't push me. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, Pac said, you know what I mean? I ain't but, a killer, but don't push uh, me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but yeah. That's I, a I, wild I, I was, story, was, man. Crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. 
All right, you have your football camp. I would love to come. Not that I could offer anything of football, but I could hang out with you guys. I could talk to the kids, meet the kids. Maybe I get in shape. I don't know. Tell everybody about the camp. Why is it free? Uh, man, because when I was growing up, man, my mom worked her butt off to to, to work extra and to send me to the USC and UCLA camp to try to get me get me seen and stuff when I was in a junior high high school. And it was never nothing free. You know, all these athletes were around. Back then, it was the LA Raiders. You know what I mean? It was never nothing free for the kids, for the inner city kids. So, you know, I always said if I made it, you know, I'm going to do a free football camp and, uh, you know, make it free. Um, you know, I get I get... I get a lot of guys to fly out, you know, mostly a lot of guys from my team because it's close. And then, you know, other guys that play on other teams, they're home that weekend. I have them come through and stuff. So, you know, the guys could meet actual NFL guys. And then I got coaches that volunteer and stuff. And we make it fun, man. We make it fun. Uh, but, yeah, I always want to do something free for the kids, man. That's so dope. You know, I feel like adults, they could go out there and work hard and, and, and make stuff on their own. Kids are innocent, you know, innocent. So this is my eighth year doing it. And, uh, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger ever since I've been a Raider, man. It's, it's getting huge. Like last year, I had to cut off registration because I, I didn't think I was going to have enough room on the field. You know what I mean? So it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, um, but um, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm excited. We have fun. I bring the DJ out. We play the music. You know, we do a little relay race after. Um, I got some I got some new stuff uh, coming up this year, a couple of little surprises and stuff, and I feed them. You know, I do, four, I do four hours. You know, I sign all the autographs and stuff like that. And and uh, we got some little fun stuff um, um, coming up this year, so it's going to be cool. But the best part... When we do the seven on seven with the older kids, okay, it gets live because they could play. Oh yeah, it's, it's it's competition. You know, it it gets live. And if somebody wants to try to sign up their kids, where can they find the camp? You got to go to uh, www.donaldpinfootball.com. You can register there, and it's a uh, I'm doing it back at my high school. Um, I went to St. Bernard's High School and played at Del Rey, so I'm doing it back there. But yeah, you can go sign up at uh, at donaldpin.com. And, um, you know, come out, have fun. Man. I would I love to it. come out. I enjoy it, man. It's, uh, it's June 2nd, so I'm looking forward to it. And um, it's, it's it's a good event. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be there. Okay, definitely. I would love for you to come, man. You know, kids, like, they, they know who you are. You know what I mean? They like to just come shake your hand and, and you can come have some fun. Man. Absolutely. So you can throw the football around with them and everything. Absolutely. All right. Donald Penn. I'm such a fan. This was fucking dope. I, I think, I mean, you could be a broadcaster or you could be like on, on TV when you're finished, when you're done. When you when, when you get out, hopefully you go out on your own terms and injury free. <clears throat> Keep playing. Maybe you make it to Vegas. Uh, maybe you don't. But you, I mean, anybody who has the Raider attitude, you have the Raider attitude. They're lucky to have you. Um, you've had a great career, a blessed career. Um, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate you come rocking with the Iron Rap Force Stereo oh, Podcast. Nah, nah, I appreciate it, man. My bad, man. We have, our schedule's been conflicting, but come I'm on, man. Make sure, I got it in, and and you know what? One thing about um, Renee, don't count me out, baby. Oh, of course not. Strong. I'm coming back strong. All right, cool, Donald Penn. That was dope. Well, did I? I wasn't bullshit when I told you this was going to be good. I want to thank my man D Penn. For rocking on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Once again, you could go to his camp, his football camp. It is free. It is free. St. Bernard High School in Playa Del Rey. Go to www.donaldpenfootball.com. It's very simple. Donaldpenfootball.com. He does it for free. He does it for the kids. This is a good dude. I like this dude. Solid dude. Funny dude. As real as they come. Donald PennFootball.com. It's a football camp and it's totally free. Yeah. Um, Moody? Yeah. It's Memorial oh. Day weekend. You got any closing thoughts? Yeah, man. You know, I want to uh, respect the flag. I, I love this country. And I want to give a shout out to our guys out there in Afghanistan, paratroopers uh, from the 1501 Parachute Infantry Regiment holding it down in Afghanistan. Sergeant Belmonte, Sergeant Corwell, and the whole regulating regiment. Yo, keep holding it down, stay safe, and America is great. That's all I would say. Um, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Have a safe, fun, but safe Memorial Day weekend. Uh, enjoy yourself. Drive safe. Drink responsibly. Please, no accidents. No accidents to you. No accidents to your family. I hate when I hear about these things over the holidays. Miles, Jordan, take us out of here with something funky. Take us out of here with something real nice, something real proper. Thank you, Judge Collins. And thank yes. you, special guest Donald Penn, for rocking with the best. Good luck with the Oakland Raiders. I want to see you guys do your thing this season. <laughs>